start up the stream and we can test things and stuff. Yep. Well, it is December, though. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, see if anybody makes it in. I'm in. What do you mean, the, the stream? Ah. Uh... should be hidden from the, the thing. All right, so let's test this mod. So you've got it uh, windowed view. Yeah, I'm going to be switching back and forth to desktop, so I didn't want to. That transition I, to be smooth. I do hear your keyboard clacking some. Yeah, some of that is really unavoidable. Yeah. Flying! How's Oz doing in there? I'm peeking at you through oh, the Oh, I'm just, uh... See, I'm outside. Sorry, coffee cut. Um, I was trying to watch the stream, see how the, uh... Sound is. <laughs> nice. Again, should disable it. Yay! It works. Now, the big test is if you have one, because I want you to make one. Sure thing. Um, because <laughs> this is where I was when I was programming it. You know, it's easy to test in single player, but multiplayer. I was concerned that if I enabled mine, would yours activate? <laughs> yeah. There they are. Gotta craft it up quick. Did I get those in the wrong spot? Go. So, is it still R, or yep. did you get double space to work? Okay. Ooh. All right, it doesn't work for me. All right, excellent. That works. Nice. Now, if you engage yours, yep. Ooh. And a renegade joined. Yay. I 
I should steal all the temple gear so he can't make one. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. So everybody, wh whoever's, whoever's here, uh, the reason I made this mod over the last week was I'm working on the cathedral. And I want to be able to, you know, build the cathedral high without an unheard of amount of scaffolding. We have a little bit of scaffolding here, and I guess it is what it is. <laughs> but it was getting a little crazy. So I like building. I don't like building the building, building stuff. So this is what this is what we're trying to build here. A lot of quartz. So that's awesome. Well, I am very happy that that worked. Another thing is I uh, I have a random things mod, sort of the random stuff that I've added and I, I made a mass ingot mold and I made a mass plate mold um, and so you know it takes the same amount of stuff that you would normally take so 40 ingots is 4,000 units so that's the same and then eight plates is 1,600 units um, and I made a, a chain mold as well for armor and I have my armor right here oh yeah and it's titanium armor and it's awesome <clears throat> so yeah that is uh, steady progress the the main thing with this mod that I made is it's it required code it required programming and that's my first little step into programming and I got her to work and so we're going to sort of review what I did here um, because I came at the problem many many different ways and my meal is about to start So anybody who is interested in, in modding and how to mod and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to, um, you know, if you want something explained further, let me know. And I will do that. So I'm going to exit for now and show. That's why I'm in windowed mode, so I don't have to switch the scene in OBS. All right, so first step is loading up some sort of text editor. No, close, yeah, sure, close. Okay, so the mod, here's the code, this is the all of the things and stuff. So I've got a few different objects here. We'll get into those in a second. I first wanted to cover the JSON. So we've got the angel belt here has assets in the game is the domain. So we have item types. This is the angel belt, right? So angel belt comes in two different variants on and off. And the way, the reason I do that is because I want to swap the texture between the two, right? It's a different, it's going to be a different texture when it's on versus off. 
And so this is the, one of the easiest ways that I found to do this. Um, the shape is just a copied version of one of the, it's like the merchant belt or something. So I just copy that shape um, over to my uh, game shapes, entity, human eye, hair, clothing, waist, angel belt. So this is the shape and it's just a copied version that's renamed to angel belt, right? Um, and then attributes by type, uh, this is basically changing the attribute belt active between the two. Now, yeah, this is kind of a holdover from me trying to get it to work. Um, I don't actually grab, I don't think I grab, well, maybe I do. I'll have to look at the code again. I've forgotten whether or not I grab that, that attribute. But that attribute basically tells me if flight is active or not. Um, and then the star, this is where that handbook exclusion by type, I don't, I might want to look into pulling that out by something else, I'm not sure. But it's still, the, the on variant is still showing up in the handbook and I don't want it to. So there's still a little bit of learning to go on there and figuring out why that's doing that. But this, the, the next step, the textures is where these variant groups really pop because the texture I set is angel belt dash and then type. And that type comes from this code on or off. And so the, te the texture angel belt dash, and it'll just fill that in with off or on. And so in the textures, entity, human eye, tear, clothes, waste, I have on and off. This one was another carryover from a previous attempt. Um, and so here's the, the, the texture when it's off, and here's the texture when it's on. You can see the little belt buckle gets gold. Um, I basically just hand, hand painted the on variant just to make it look a little different. Haven't tested in the game whether or not it actually changes the texture because there was a redraw problem that I was running into. But my first step was getting it working. Um, and the transforms, this is basically most of this, um, all of this code is basically copied from the actual belt JSON from the base game. And I stripped it down because um, the, the variant groups of the base game are, there's a lot of different belts and they all use the same JSON. So um, they have a whole lot of like GUI transform by type. There's a whole lot of entries in there and I just cut it all down into star, which means all of them. And that's basically the JSON. That's all the JSON is for the angel belt. There's, it really, really is a minimal amount of stuff that you have to do there. The Most of the heavy lifting is done by code and we'll open up my angel belt mod here. So the item, obviously I have a lot of stuff commented out as I was trying to get all this stuff working. Um, so I can actually take all this out, make it a little bit cleaner. Um, so the on held interact start, I, I initially wanted to try to get a sneak right click to activate it, but then I realized you would be constantly taking it in and out of your inventory in order to do that. And so I scrapped a lot of this idea of interacting with it in your hand in order to activate it. Um, so this doesn't really do much. Um, it basically <clears throat> um, just makes sure everything's not null and, you know, it, it you know, grabs the inventory, it checks the dress type, making sure that um, the dress type is known. And um, this try flip with, you're supposed to be able to um, right click with it in your hand and automatically put it in your, your waist slot, but I don't know if I've ever gotten that to work. 
So this code really doesn't do anything. The unheld idle um, is sort of a sanity check. When you're just holding it in your hand, I was having an issue where um, if somebody was flying around and then they took it out of their belt slot and they just held it in their hand, um, you were still able to fly around. And so what this does is um, it says, hey, uh, if you grab it, if you're hel if you're holding it, um, disable all of the features. And the on before render, and there's another one down here, Gen Mesh Ref. This is again directly copied from the base game um, to try to get it to render right because it was not rendering right. And I was struggling with it, and I just copied basically directly copied the. Uh, item wearable code and uh, sure enough it worked so again uh, just you know reference that stuff on loaded in the item um, this is run when the object is loaded in the game now you are not guaranteed that there's a world loaded on loaded is just um, loading it uh, from the game. So um, this actually doesn't really do anything. Um, it does grab the close category from the JSON. So if I were to pull that angel belt back up again, close category right here, right? So close category is what that is grabbing. Attributes of close category and um, it drops it into this string value. And then I basically grab the, <clears throat> I parse it with an enum parser that converts uh, the waste um, string here and it tries to convert it into enum character dress type. And that's just all, all the different things that you can put in your character slots, you know, all those different items, gloves and boots and stuff like that. That's all in dress type. And so it basically says, hey, is this waist? And it says this dress type equals the dress type. So um, in that enum character dress type, if we want to look at that, I recommend if you're, if you're wanting to get into programming, um, get this 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 program DN spy is phenomenal so this is what I use to really really deep dive into um, into the game code and you know the base game code most of it is online you can go to github and actually look at it all but it's hard to like search it's hard to like tie things together and analyze things um, so an example would be enum dress type. Uh, oh, I spelled it wrong. Enum character dress type. Enum character dress type. Okay. Head, shoulder, upper body, upper body over, lower body, foot, neck, emblem, face, arm, hand, waist, armor head, armor body, and armor legs. And you notice these have um, numbers. So what this is actually is an index into an array of your inventory. So you have different numbers in here and that, you know, armor head equals 12 means your inventory, the 12th slot in your inventory is your armor. Um, so the 14th slot would be armor legs. I think that's how this cascades down. Um, I'm surprised they don't have numbers for each of these just to do a sanity check to make sure nothing gets scrambled. But we can then analyze this in this program and it will go through all of the DLLs that you have loaded. So I have the Vintage Story API on here. Okay. So here's the Vintage Story API. I have the Vintage Story Survival Mod on here. OK, 
okay, I have the Essentials mod on here, and I have the Creative Mod Core on here, plus a couple other mods. I've got, um, let's see, I've got the Anvil Metal Recovery mod and the Expanded Foods mod on here, because they, as, as examples of how they did things. But I can go to enum character dress type and say, what is this used by? You can see here's all the different, all the different things that uses that enum. And I can say um, is character item character slot is dress type. And so this is just a static that is is checking if the item stack equals this dress type. So yeah, it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, this is a check to make sure that when you try to drop so your know, item character, item slot character, those are all your character slots. And so this is just something to make sure that you, you can't put a belt in your glove slot, so to speak. And this is just double checking. Um, and so this gives you all the items or all the places that enum character dress type um, appears in, which is vital in in my way of, of modding and programming because I really want to get an idea of how everything ties together. And this is this is a, an essential app, essential program that I use to um, actually do that because wow, without this, it would have been really hard to piece together all the different parts and pieces on how to get this thing to work. And so, yeah, moving on, we've got um, <clears throat> the actual mod itself. So mod system, because this, the item actually inherits from generic item. So my angel belt item inherits from item. And that is just the item in, in, in the game. It's, it's kind of a dummy item. It doesn't really do much. Um, there's some sanity checks in here. There's a lot of superfluous code that I'm not using. So there, there is a, there is a way. Um, I, I, you know, if when I want to get this out and I want to upload this, I'll strip out a lot of the stuff I don't need in here because now that it's working and I know how it works, I can use that as a an example. Uh, okay, so um, uh, let's see. This is the mod. So this is the actual mod system object that I'm building. Um, and oh, a lot of stuff in here is set. Um, a lot of stuff in here is also superfluous. But the important thing in here is toggle, okay, Toggle is that thing, when you hit R, toggle is the thing that checks, are you on or off? So this last code part is checking the, the item stack in your way slot. Is it on or off? If it's off, means it's not enabled. So I swap the item, right, with the variant. So item stack, swap stack. Swap stack is item enabled flight. And then I set that stack and then I mark it dirty. It means it'll it mark and, and this is all server side. This toggle is server side. So I mark that dirty, which sends that information to the client and say, oh, there's something there's something new in the slot you need to you need to update. Then I set a free move variable. This is in the game. Um, freely settable. Free, it, it allows you to fly, so set that to true. And then the entity properties fall damage set to false means you don't take fall damage because I have to set this in my testing because when you're off the ground and you don't set this, you continually take damage as if you were falling. Even though you're flying, you're still, you're still taking fall damage because your feet um compared to the last time they were on the ground are different and so the game doesn't know how to handle that and so you just continually take fall damage until you die 
Um, so you have to set fall damage false. And then I play a sound. And that's the sound you hear when you hit R. Now, if it is on, it goes down here, meaning the belt is on, we need to disable it. So I swap it with the disabled flight item, set the stack, mark it dirty, and then I set free move false, fall damage true, and I play the sound again. And that's all that it took to get um, the thing actually working. Now, how I communicate with the server, that was the last piece of the puzzle. Okay. So let me talk about the client. When the client, let's say you are going to join a server. When the client starts the game, none of the code is loaded. Right? Um, it loads mods and DLLs and all that when you join the world and you're getting those packets from the server to load all this stuff up. So there's a basic start, and this is run regardless of what side you're on. And this is registering my angel belt. So register item class angel belt type of angel belt item. This string in here, angel belt, directly relates to class in your JSON. So this class, angel belt, comes from this register item class right here. So this can be, you know, anything you want. You could put Buford in here, and then you just have Buford over here, and you're good to go. Um, and then I'm saving a, a reference to the API that we're loading. But then there's two sub sub items. There's start client side and start server side. These depend on, obviously, which side of the fence you're going to be starting. And if you're going to be a client loading into the server, I have a special client API that I variable that I set. And then register fly key. Okay, so the fly key is R, and that's done here. And so this sanity check to make sure we're on client. We should only ever be on client when this is done, right? So this is superfluous, but I, I there's a lot of checks in here that are superfluous just to make sure we don't crash because crashing is bad. Um, so when they hit R, I detect, does the player have the belt? And player has belt on here. You can see all these commented out debug commands because I was crashing in here and I couldn't figure out what line of code I was crashing on. Because what I was doing is it was running this code before I was even ever in the game. And so it was crashing on something in here and I needed to I needed to have sanity checks. So there's a lot of null checks. Is the world null? Is the player null? Is the inventory null? Um, when I grab the inventory, is that inventory null? Um, just you know, I probably don't need a lot of these, but I'll just leave them in because it's good to have some some null checks because you don't want to be accessing anything that's null. That's, that's bad. Um, so then, once I grab the belt slot and this character dress type dot waste, this is the belt, and is the slot null? If it's not, is it empty? Right. Sometimes it's empty. If you hit the R key and there's nothing in that slot, it, cr it would crash because it would be like, oh, I can't act. The belt slot is, it exists. It always exists because it's part of the character, but it's empty and I can't, I shouldn't be able to access it. Um, so if it's not empty, then I can come down here. Is that slot Item stack, first code part, contains angel belt. This is the, the check that verifies, do you have the angel belt in the, in the slot that it's supposed to be? If you do, finally return true. It's the only return true in this whole, whole line. So that comes back and says, okay, player has belt. It's true. So if it's true, come in here, and this is... This was the, what I did at 1 in the morning this morning. <laughs> this is how I got this to work. So when it comes to client-server stuff, 
And even when you're in single player, you're still a client server. And so what I do on both client side and server side is I register a channel called Angel Belt. And the, the, the game is so elegantly programmed. Like they, they plan for every contingency. It was, it's amazing. Um, so register channel, you register the same channel name, Angel Belt. And that is the channel that this mod is going to communicate on. So then I register message type of belt toggle. And that is over here. Um, belt toggle is an object with a string. Belt response is also a simple object with a string. Not much to it. Right? So belt toggle is an object. Belt response is an object. Now, the client actually handles the response. The server handles the toggle. And you can swap these if you want. You can have the server send something to the client and the client respond, right? So you can, these are interchangeable. One is going to send the, the message. One is going to get the message and uh, respond to it. So the one that you want to get the message and process, you want the response to. Um, and then the one that is going to just respond, you want to be able to handle the actual event itself. It's sort of like a network-based event handler. So on each one of these, you set the message handler of your type. This is a generic type to a new server, network server message handler of that same type, belt response, to a procedure. And you do the same thing on here. New procedure. And this is just an action, basically. Um, it uses delegates, and if you're if you're not a big programmer, I know it's confusing. But delegates are sort of uh, generic procedures that you can um, you can tie into events. Um, game events are um, delegates. All right, so we have the we have the channel set. We have the types of messages that we're going to send, and we have the response that we're going to send. Um, and then a, an additional thing on server side is I had to tie into, and this was the very last thing that I did last night to get it to work. Um, the SAPI, that's just the server side API, right? That is just what I'm getting from this start server side. So I tie into the events and the event specifically save game loaded. This is fired after the game world loads. So even in single player, when you load a game world and it's and it and it loads um, the the content, it actually triggers this um, this delegate and I just tie in the plus equals just adds this get variance to that chain. And there might be a lot of things that tie into save game loaded. And so mine is just tacked on. And it's like, okay, well, let's just get variance. Because I need to grab the, the on item and the off items. You know, those are two different variants. And so I just grab a copy of each of those. I set them internally to get item. And this, this is why I had to use this event because this get item was returning null um, because when you first load the game in the main menu, this is empty. There's no, there's no world loaded. And so this would constantly crash on me and uh, no, no reference and it was just bad. But with it tied into the game after it's loaded, then it works just fine. And to be on the safe side, I add a story event. Um, you know when you start a single player world, um, as it as it's loading, it's it's printing out weird random text to you, almost like a narrative. 
Okay, that's where this is coming from, this story event. Um, I just add the text, flying free as a bird. And that tells me, if I'm loading a single player world, and I see that text, I know that it got into this code, and it ran this code, and it's fine. There's no errors. Because if there was, it would not, <laughs> it would stop, you know, running this code, and it would bomb out and... Uh, and print out an error into the log files. So if you see flying free as a bird, it works. It's your. It's good to move on. Um, all right. So what do I do? How do I handle the belt toggle and the belt response? That's tied into the client. So we already covered the register fly key. So the register fly key. Um, maybe we didn't. Okay. All this does is register a hotkey. Okay, so I know register fly key is only going to be run on the client side. The server does not care about hotkeys because there's not direct interaction. So this client side API, register hotkey, I register the angel hotkey, right? That is the key code, that is the code specific to this hotkey and the name is enable angel belt and I don't know if they have plans to add mod hotkey things and stuff but uh, anyway so I set that to R GL keys dot R and I say it's a character control which means it's only active if there's no GUI open if there's no dialogue open then it's active if you have a dialog open, I want to disable it, which is good because if you have, let's say, if you're editing a sign, right, I don't want the R key to be active. I don't want this hot key to be active. So making sure that's disabled with, with dialogs open. And then once the register is done, then I set the handler. This on fly key pressed is the procedure that will be run when this hotkey is set, is hit. So this just basically sets up a listener in the game for that hotkey. And when it's hit, it knows exactly what procedure to run, which is on fly key pressed. On fly key pressed is, you know, it passes in the key combination, but I know that it was pressed. If R was pressed, this this is run. I do a sanity check on making sure we're on client side. Here's the belt check. This this actually makes sure because if if the player doesn't have a belt in their inventory, I don't I I don't care. Um, we want to skip it because it's obvious that it we don't need to do anything more. But if they do have the belt, if has belt. I make a, one of these belt toggle objects, belt toggle. I set it to new and I set that toggle text, this toggle right here, I set that to the user ID of the player um, that is controlling this client instance, right? So the client that is running this instance, grab their player ID and dump it into toggle. Now, this is really superfluous. Uh, I don't really need to do this because I'll get into that in a second. And so this grabs the client channel, which I know is active because we are on the client side. So the client channel dot send packet of type belt toggle and the specific object belt toggle. This is sending a packet to the server of this type of this object. Now, what do we do on the server? Well, the server, where's my code? Obviously the server is grabbing the belt toggle object and the when it receives that message, it's gonna run on client sent. Now on client sent, there's that belt toggle object. The belt toggle object's coming in. 
but because this is a server, it automatically sends what player it came from. Now, again, I'm this belt toggle object includes the player, but I could have I you know I could have had any any really serializable data in the in that object, but for now this I don't really use this belt toggle object right now, unfortunately, because when I built this I wasn't didn't know that the client or the server automatically gets the player. So I use that because that's sent from the game code and I know that player is the player that it comes from. I still do a sanity check making sure the player is not null and the object isn't null. Um, and this successful equals toggle, right? This is the toggle procedure that we covered already. This actually sets the object um, and all of the variables on the server side. That's the important thing. They're set on the server side. And I wanted to make sure everything was set on the server side. Um, okay, so if we're successful on that toggle, then I create a new belt response, right? So if we're successful, the belt response is success. And I send that packet. Otherwise, I send fail, and then I send that packet. So either way, I send a packet, either success or fail. And I send that packet um, as a belt response, right, um, from the player, and I include the belt response object for us. So the from player, and I just cast that as a server player because... There's I player, there's I client player, there's I server player. There's there's a lot of different weird objects that you have to deal with. Okay, so that response is sent to the client. So the client receives the belt response, right? So if response dot response, which is kind of funny, but you can see belt response includes string of response. And then I named it response. <laughs> so it's response.response. .response. If it's success, that means we, we were good. If it's a fail, for some reason, the toggle failed. And so I print out a chat message that said it failed. Um, and I commented this show chat message out um, because it was spamming the chat window. And that was... Every time you hit R, it would <laughs> it would pop this in there. I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, if it's not success, and if it's not even fail, that means something really went bad, and we're getting a response back that we did not expect, and so I just print that response out. I'm like, I, I have response unknown. Here's a weird response. Um, and that's just, you know, this line of code should never, ever be run, but if a let's say a mod down the line um, is built and for some reason they include the angel belt channel you know if they register their channel and they for some reason call it angel belt it might cause really weird behavior um, and so that that just captures an unknown response and prints it out and that is that is basically it. That is um, how this mod works. And it's yeah, I think it, it works really well. The fact that I actually got it to work and I, I spent quite of many hours <laughs> quite a few hours um, getting this getting this mod to work. So yeah, once the stream is over, uh, we I will finalize the object, recompile it, get it get it really streamlined and uh, easy to, easy to read, and then I'll upload it onto the Vintage Story um, mod database thing, and uh, everybody could be able to use it. So yeah, if you have any questions, even if you're watching this stream. You know, after the fact, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so, yeah, one of the bugs that's left 
is why does this exclude by type in the handbook, not <sighs> not actually work? I don't know why. It shouldn't it shouldn't work, but it it's there, I guess. So I'm gonna close DN Spy. Who knows how much RAM that's taking? We're gonna go back in the game here. Let's close out some of this stuff. Close solution. I uh I was testing things out and I, I found a little bug. Oh, what's I, that? I flew really high into the air, um, and then I got close to the ground, turned it off, and I died. So it must have remembered how high I had been and set that as my fall distance. Um, hmm. Hmm. So you went way high up and yep. you were still flying. Yep. Turned it off. Um, what I actually had done, it was I turned it off so that I fell faster and then I turned it on close to the ground. I did it a few times just to gradually get myself close. And then I was just a few blocks above the, uh, the ground and I turned it off. And when I hit the ground, I died. Hmm. Hmm. That is an interesting bug. Yeah. Um. That is a really interesting bug, and the way that I would investigate that. Okay. So. Let's search for fall. Entity properties, fall damage. Um, analyze. Okay, so this is just grabbing. Okay, so let's look at um, enum death cause. So I wonder what is caused by doesn't look like it's used by anything. Really? Fall damage. How is that possible that it that enum death cause is not used by anything? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Player. Entity player. There's a lot of stuff on entity player. These these some of these objects are enormous. Um damage source. Damage type. Gravity. Okay, maybe enum damage type. Um, type of damage that was taken. Yeah. Get source position. Let's see, let's analyze damage source. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff uses that. Um, let's see. On ground idle. Entity receive damage. Should receive damage. Receive damage. And there are the neighborhood dogs going crazy. Jeez. Wow. Uh, all right. 
should receive damage. This always returns true. <laughs> That's funny. So... Where is it getting... Damage source is... Is activity running invulnerable? So the key is invulnerable. Try to get value. Activity timers. Interesting. Not synchronized. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to find where that check is to do damage. So I'm guessing it's in receive damage here. So damage source. So where does this receive? So used by, oh wow. There's a lot of stuff and things in here. Um, let's see. Not block falling, not a projectile. Um, entity agent received damage. So it was almost like when you were really, really high up. Yep. And you disabled it, and you fell a whole long ways, and then you re-enabled it. It was almost like that queued up that fall. Right. <laughs> right? Because you were falling, 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 falling. And so I think as that game was ticking, it was adding up the damage that you would eventually receive. But since you turned it back on again... um. And almost paused that process. And then when you were close to the ground and you turned it off, it had queued up all of that damage and it dumped it all on you all at once. Sounds right. Um, so, do you think I should, once you, because if I remember right, in Minecraft, the angel ring once you had that even crafted, fall damage was eliminated. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, I, you know, a lot of a lot of my process of figuring out how to do this mod, um, learning a lot about why some mods in Minecraft do what they do, and that might be, you know, the reason why it's disabled fall damage for all time. Um, it might be related to this problem of how do you stop this queuing up fall damage? Yeah. Um, so if this is entity, what sort of, well, let's look at, this is just regular entity. Um, so where would be, that's common entities. Where is entity player? There they are. And you are entity humanoid. Ground proposition to the reason. On impact. Action. Call by the game client and server. Okay, let's close this. That. Public action double on impact. Let's analyze. 
Where's this? Entity player on fall to ground. Okay. So entity player on fall to ground. That sounds like I'm in the right spot. Um, so this dot world dot player by user ID equals player dot user you know your user ID because I I can look in the log file and get a get when you join the server I can see like your user ID that user ID is unique in the world it's it's the user ID when you first basically sign up for the game and you and you join and you play the game for the first time it generates that user ID and that is your unique ID in all the land <laughs> basically um, okay so it never changes um, okay I'm not sure what it is offhand yeah it's just a weird alphanumeric randomly generated okay. string it's nothing nothing fancy it's just one of the things I learned when programming for this yeah Okay, so flag. If player equals null, flag equals true. If player equals null, flag equals if, if flag. So if player is null, I will player data. So this is. This is players not null. Enum game mode. Enum game mode. So that's. This is checking real data. Current game mode. Enum game mode 2. Spectator. Flag. Okay, this is just checking to see if they're a spectator or not. To get value in the mode. So this is checking if they're if they're a spectator. If they are. Oh no. And you know oh, I don't know what the hell that's doing. That's a really weird line of code. Not going to unpack that just yet. Okay, so any position, sided position. Um, this dot block under player. Sided position. This is grabbed the sound of that block. Let's grab the asset of the sound. Play sound at. Okay. Action double on impact equals this dot on impact. On impact. Huh. So this is grabbing. Impact. Interesting. Uh, there's not equal no. So this, if on impact has something in it, which is an action, um, then it then it runs it. If it doesn't. It just does to on fall to ground. Any behavior, any behaviors, on fall to ground. Entity behavior. Uh, behaviors. So, what is entity behavior? Looks like these are all, or 
mostly events on game tank, on entity spawn, on entity loaded. Yeah, these are all on fall to ground. Ridden by entity behavior health. This that entity that property is a fall damage. Okay, this is that variable that I set in the mod. The property, the fall damage property. This is what I set to false. So while it's false, you don't take damage. This returns nothing. Um, but position before falling. Okay, so on fall to ground, used by, no, really, it's not used by anything? Trying to find where this position before falling comes from. Position before falling dot y minus this type of position. For some reason, after you reactivated that, you fell for a ways and then you stopped. For yep. some reason, when then you turned it off again, that position before falling did not get reset. Right. Hmm. Receive damage. So why entity behavior help? Overrides. Would override on fall to ground. Entity behavior passive physics. Double. Okay. Entity position. <laughs> I do like some of the calls in this game. Do physics. <laughs> <laughs> just like, do physics and just pass it a few things like oh that's nice um yep. if not on ground and this entity on ground okay entity dot on ground Wow, there's a whole lot of stuff in the do physics. Um, yeah, on ground, swimming, feet in liquid. Apply gravity. Well, I think what we'll do because this, oh man, there's like three or four different layers of things in here based on.
this dot position. Follow that position before following. Yeah. Position before falling. The position where the entity last had contact with the ground. So if I look at this position before falling. Hey Kenny, how's it going? Um, yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. So that's a weird. Yeah, you you pretty much have to be crazy to be a programmer. Um, it's a weird thing to save. The position before falling. I'm assuming for some reason that's not reset after you enabled it again. So I could yeah. try setting it. Position before falling. When you disable it, I could try setting that again. It's just a, it's just a 3D vector that I could set. There, it's a public thing, so I don't, I think, I mean, it's part of the entity class, but I don't know if it's part of the entity player class. Um, position before falling position okay Busy day at the bazaar, you say? Currently controlled player. Should receive damage. Public override. Bull should receive damage. To double. So, let me boot up uh, Visual Studio again. Go down here to the mod and toggle. Belt is on, we need to disable it. So here, player dot previous no position uh, player dot entity dot position before falling equals player dot position entity dot position a vector 3D synced entity position cannot convert dot
that's a much bigger object than I thought it was. Um, our clean motion. XYZ. Bingo. Yeah, I reported that, whoever was doing that. Reported and banned them. All right. So position before falling, I set hard code to the current position of the entity. Set by the game client and server. So this procedure, toggle, is the server. Um, let's see. No. I want to... Yeah, let's see if this works. So we're going to rebuild. And uh, let's verify the bug in single player. Even though it takes for, for some reason, it takes forever to load. to load the world yeah that's weird I think some of it is the, there's, a, there's a couple mods that we have that seem to like to generate the recipes and stuff on the fly so the extended oh. foods mod does an enormous amount of rendering or generating on the fly and the potion mod the alchemy mod does it too. So the game has to stop and make sure everything is all loaded there. It'll eventually go. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go up. A ways. Didn't work for you? No. I'm gonna huh. go a little bit higher. Nope. Still didn't. Sorry. Uh, I was turning it kind of off and on, and I did it rapidly. That might have played a part. You know, so as I was, as I was falling, kind of midway, I uh, real quick turned it on, back on, then off again, uh, hoping that that would break up the fall. That one killed me. 
Okay. Now, let's try it. Full, full bar of health. It seems to be only when. Okay, let me verify that. Ah, of course I hit the I hit the key at the exact time I hit the ground. Oh shoot! Nope, it still didn't do it. Hmm. Um. Move over here. Yeah. Yep, that one did it too. Um. So I wonder if it's based on your your. Do a quick new test here. So if I just go straight up, disconnect, fall. If I don't move X and Y, or X and Z. I, I, I works fine. But if okay. I go straight up, right, and then I go over a little bit, I don't know if you're watching the stream, if I go over a little bit, right, and then I do it. And then it triggers? Oh. Yep, and then it triggers. Okay. So, yeah, it's weird. It's, if, you're, if you don't move X and Z, if you go with the same block space, um, it, it, it doesn't do it, but if you move in either direction, then it triggers it. That's weird. So yeah. if I reset position before falling, um, to this, to the current position, Oh, there's Z Z programming vintage Angel Belt, Angel Belt. And this. Place, and then I always clear the cache. Not really, I don't think it's necessary, but I clear it out of my cache because I don't want it to do that. Single player. Oh, that's awesome. I have, play, I have played Space Engineers. I have not played it in a very, very long time.
think that fixed it. Nice. It's not happening now. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Yup. It'll probably just take some testing. Alright, save and leave. And quit. And take that. Belt. Put it in my Discord. Oh, yep. Should we pop out of the server? Yeah, pop out of the server. I'm going to update the server so we can get in there and start building and stuff. Um, Sounds good. Death catch that too. Oh man, I can hear. I think I heard him say that. Yeah. I've got him at one hundred and fifty-three percent too. Oh, I've got him at two hundred. All right, so. I'll turn the blocker on while I connect to the server. I get the spammer. Um, another one showed up? Yeah. God damn. Okay, so. Stop the server. How about now? There we go. That's much better. There you go, yeah. I think what they did was uh, they changed their name slightly. Well, it has to be a completely different account. Yeah. Because I banned the account. So, like... Um, let's see. Did I copy? I think I copied it. Yeah. 1021. Yeah. I think. Verify. I don't want to do all this and not have. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I have done that. I have been in the middle of something and not copied the mod over and then gone in and be like, it didn't change anything. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yep. That's Fortress on. Craft. That's his. Uh, that's like your background image, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a hive mind from Fortress Craft. Yeah. That particular screenshot is called Hive Mind Hat. <laughs> it's a very lovely hat. Yeah. I bet it served him well. It did for about thirty On a seconds. Platter. All right. Yeah, that potion mod takes a while to start. We haven't even we haven't even touched it yet. Yeah, I haven't I haven't delved into it either. The cooking alone has been just so so much to try and wrap the head around. Mm hmm Oh, somebody's already trying to join. Look at that. Yeah, sorry, that was me. I Oh I brain thinged it. And there's a renegade. Okay, so close. Yeah, your ID is an alphanumeric, uppercase, lowercase, string of what looks like, I don't know how many characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
20, looks like 32. Okay. So a 32 character alphanumeric. So that is 26 plus 26. It's 52 plus 10. That's 62 characters. <clears throat> 62 characters. Um, with 32. So that's 32 to the power of 62. <laughs> that is almost a Google number of combinations for for a player ID. It's two two to the ninety third power. <laughs> More than the number of atoms in the universe, by the way. So I think we're good on on unique identifiers. All right, let me close out. Um, of Visual Studio, close out a DN Spy, close out a Notepad. I'm still not sure why that. <sighs> it's not working. Okay, let's load up. Uh, load on streaming. Let's load up Vintage Story. Full screen it. is let's make sure OBS OBS is finicky sometimes oh uh the generation two ewes um so far I've had a hundred percent success rate trying to milk them oh I think that's mostly luck. I, I'm guessing that there is a, a fair ch or you know, a chance of failure. Oh, yay, my, uh, I, I wasn't sure if activating and deactivating it was changing the texture at all, but it is. Yay. Oh. Oh, look at that. Nice. So that works. That's awesome. I like when shit works. Uh, ready. So, let's see where we are in terms of building here. Do, 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 do. Of grass up here, that's funny. All right, yeah, just because this, this process is going to get really nasty, this roof process. So, how do I want to have? Thinking granite brick stairs, if I do one underneath here, and then take this one out. I gotta go AFK a little while. <laughs>
Yeah, it's going to take a lot of acacia wood. <laughs> oh, it's going to take a lot of acacia wood. Just a couple. Oh, I'm running out of these leaves. Look up, bunnies. So yeah, there's also a key in creative mode that allows you to alter your f flight speed and stuff. And I haven't looked into that at all. I might add that ability later. Like, uh, I think it's F3. So if we go into settings, controls, down here in creative mode, um, minus one fly move speed, plus one fly move speed. F1 and F2. Now, cycle through three fly modes. I don't. I don't think those are even active. Um, so if I'm flying F3, yeah, see F3. It's the keys are disabled. Um, if you're not in the right mode, so I gotta figure out how to how to do that. Um, how to get that to work? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna need a bunch of Casey wood. A sweet, sweet thing. And saw that stuff down. Notice my inventory is massive because I have all four temporal and not uh, temporal rifts in here, and uh, it's awesome. Is what it is. So many of the Acacia Stairs. And it sucks that this only makes one stack. But you get twelve you get twelve boards from one log. And so 12 boards, that would make one, two, three, that would make four stairs. So one log equals four stairs. That's actually a pretty good ratio. Um, I should have. Sort of 
side. Not sure what I'm gonna do on that side yet. Now you see why I wanted this angel, angel belt, because doing this with scaffolding is not advised. You'd have to have just forests worth of scaffolding just to be able to get what I'm doing here done. And I like building, but I don't like scaffolding. I'm a, you know, not a fan. Don't mind harvesting the resources that I need, all that kind of stuff, but Watching the stream, it looks like you probably want a hand for the, the steps. Do you have some pre-made steps in the, the crates, or should I make some? Oh, I just crafted a, a massive amount of <coughs> acacia steps. So they're all in my okay. inventory. Uh, all right. Let's see, I'm going to go check the model here really quick. Um, how do I have... Okay, so... This goes up. Okay, so the wood ends along that line. Okay. So that means, yeah, that's the last of the wood there. So this is the last. Do we need another saw? No, there should be one. Oh, did, did I not? Oh, I didn't put the, I didn't put the saw there. Ah, oh, okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so I can, I can give you some. That works. And then let me put the saw. So this Go. side should be done up to there. Nice. Um, and then if I look at the model, on the inside of that block, there should be a line of quartz. Right. So I need some quartz. Let's go down here. This should be and that is you need to go. Actually that might be a pillar. Yep, that has to be a pillar. the other one. Okay. So, rinse and repeat. <laughs> many, many, many times. Uh, let's see. This, that go 
goes upside down, that upside down, um, that upside down. I'll cover one side if you want to. Oh, you're going to work on that. Later, Kenny. Yeah. That's what that's what you, his nickname is, right? Kenny. Okay. All right, I'm going to get down here and grab some acacia. All right, I'll come up here. Ah, all right. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to be able to control flight a little bit better. I'm gonna have to look into those. Yeah, Rohan, we uh, we had done some work off screen, but now the buggy has the uh, angel belt it's for flight. It's gonna it's gonna go a lot faster. Yeah, because sitting around, you know, building scaffolding is just like I just don't like. Yeah. All right. Got to get back in position here. There we go. All right. And this is the last line. And then it's quartz. Yeah, that's the quartz line along the back. Belt. Not bell, belt. Sometimes I'm not great with articulation. Yeah, my, my angel belt. It's my mod that I just came out with. And uh, I'll be uploading it um, after the stream. So, it'll get all filled in eventually. And then this one, same thing. Out. Out. Ah. So these, unlike Minecraft, right? Minecraft had stairs that connected to one another. This does not. But this has a more powerful solution. Get rid of my bowl. Think. Textures don't quite match, though. Yeah, I mean that 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 can be probably redone. Um, yeah. You could you can uh, chisel all of them and the textures match up. If you if you enable chisel blocks on all of them, you can see in the bottom here they ah. all match up. Um. So do that. Um. Actually, that goes there. There. Oh, that's strange, Rohan. Like that. Now I'll match up. Let's see. Huh. That is weird. Okay, so we can 
chisel all of these if we really want to. Uh, I, I'm more going for the color rather than the texture because this is going to be a roof, so I'm not going to worry too much about yeah. it. Yeah. Do you want me to cover the other side of these? Uh, the underside? Yeah, we're going to need. But we it's going to be a little quirky because one side is going to go up higher than the other. Ah. Right. Um, so, what is this? Uh, the west. Yeah, west side. The west is going to go all the way up to a peak, whereas the other side here is going to go up to the limit. Okay. Um, like I always say, you know, reference the um, uh, reference the model if you ever are confused. Yeah. Nope. Oh no. The world's gonna end. We need one in the corner too. Alright. Uh, uh nope. down here, I bet. in that stack. All the way down. Mm hmm. Go. Ah. Okay, that's okay, it for so that, that side. No, I don't think uh, Buggy was swearing this time. Uh, Kenny was talking about another time where somebody was swearing. Was trying to remember who I am, I think. Alright, I'm gonna go help make some lunch. I'll be back soon. Alrighty.
So there's a few roof options that we can do. There's a roof ridge. That's one block thick, that would work, but I think the model I have. Yeah, see, I go up, 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 and then over with a quartz block. Some basalt stairs to zigzag up that. So much basalt. If, if Renegade is still in here, he could go out and find some basalt. That would really help. So we're gonna be we're gonna be going through so much basalt. I can do that. The biggest area of basalt that I have found is roughly, let's see, where is that? It's about a kilometer south, like directly south. It starts a big basalt field. There's some shale in there, but, um, and I've, yeah, there's, it's a pretty extensive area. There's actually a, a cave that I, I jotted down the coordinates to somewhere. Oh my gosh, where did I put that? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm probably not gonna be able to find that. I added a new monitor to my setup and now my desk is all over the place. Um, anyway. Okay, so these edge ones, the quartz block appears on the top of that section going up. So the top. Now, do I want that to be a quartz block? Basalt, closest thing we're going to be able to do for basalt stairs, it's going to be, you do brick stairs, but I really don't want to make brick. Um, I think we're going to go, not, not dry stone. One, four, 
So I do that. Ah, wrong way. in the past that I've split that out, but, and then this gets a treatment like this, Easily. Like so. And there is your flying buttress. Let's get some other round of that. Yeah, lots of material goes into this build, everybody. Lots and lots of material. seem like that much. 
Oh yeah, I also, I don't know if I showed this to you on camera, but I also made a diamond tip steel pickaxe for funsies. Because I knew we were going to be needing a lot of material to build this. <clears throat> Okay, I'm back. Yay. Oh yeah, I was the FK Rohan. <clears throat> you don't mess with the Rohan. One, two, three, there. One, two, three. For some reason, my... The pitch on my... Oh, yes, I know why that is. Okay, never mind. One, two, three. I know why that is. came back and my screen is frozen what or not frozen but my i have the the frost on the edges oh you got the shivers huh yeah are you wearing shivers. your fur fur outfit yep let's see what the durability is oh it got damaged oh yep well we might have enough linen for you to uh yeah maybe reason that this is a different profile is this window right here you see this is the same and the, and the thing is all the other windows so it's a one and then three wide a one three wide one right so it's that same pattern only when I made the model I didn't count right so it's just one big window and so it's a shorter it's a shorter distance so that is a shorter distance which means all this is different so the model is going to be a little bit different from um, from the main building but that's okay cuz you know models are never perfectly accurate anyway
I do love how the snow can accumulate on top of chiseled or unsquare blocks. Like the game is so good that it it can do that, no problem. Well, we made I made more progress in the last ten minutes than <laughs> <laughs> when we built the most of this other structure, just because I was able to not deal with gravity. Yelp. Damn gravity. What good is it? Oh, this is nice. We we have five ewes that are milkable. So all I have to do is just go out there and uh, milk them, and I got a full full batch ready to go. Yeah, a full full barrel. Yep. sure how I want to do that. I found a, a spelling error. Uh, diluted borax is spelled wrong. Mm.
Oh, there's a bunny in the house. <gasps> ah. Bunny in the house. Bunny. <laughs> Snow is slowly creeping southward. It's amazing this game is the seasons in this game are amazing. Just like Yeah. How how do you transition one season to another? It's just brilliant.
So has Death made himself an angel belt yet? Not yet. No? no. Not yet? Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to lend you a hand again if you need. Uh, yeah. Uh, I see. will need more <clears throat> stairs, though. Should I make some, or do you got a bunch still? Um, I don't have a bunch. I have like six stacks, seven stacks. All right, I'll um, go make some more because we'll need it. Oh, we're gonna, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need acacia tree run. Yeah, I, could I think if I could remember where yeah. I saw all those trees. There's some right out front. Well, I don't know. I'm they're... talking about cl clear cutting a natural forest, ah. like because <laughs> there's not many logs on a single tree, so it takes a lot of trees to. Uh, Build up the logage that we need. Yeah. If you want me to keep this basalt as stone or convert it to rock? Um, I would say convert half of it to rock and keep half of it for stairs. Well, maybe 75 25 rock because we, we need some basalt cobble stairs but not as many as as we would need all right um, and then over here like that I'm stock locked and ready to rock. Ooh. Uh, I'm trying to get quite a lot of stuff ready. So this corner over here, this is all ready to go. want to do the the walk this this side you can actually walk on so it's a lot easier if you wanted to do that I can do the yeah. flying I can do the flying part you're struggling uh nah I was just getting flummoxed before <sighs> sorry if you hear a little bit of background noise I know it's totally unforgivable, though. Okay. <laughs> Advantage of walking is that the pacing works, so you can just, yeah, flap it down like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Damn near to the point where you could have two people doing this side yeah once I oh, once I look cool. into um, how to how to change the pacing of flying because there's there's a way to change it the F there's F wow. keys that do it Damn. Um, so I might 
actually try to uh, improve upon it. All right, this is the last layer for this side. Okay, you yeah. said that was the last. This is yeah. the last one. Yeah, okay. that was the last layer because it's the center line here. Oh, there's a little bug. If you look at the snow on this side, they hmm. did a lot of work to fix those. But do what? Um, see where? Uh, there you are. Can oh you yeah. See the yeah. <clears throat> It used to happen with the um, stone paths too, but they fixed that now. Yeah, and they just came out with a new version, uh, release candidate, oh. so it's unstable. Um, but it fixes ah. the fog. So fog, it, see, they said that something in dot fifteen broke the system where it broke the f the fog that would generate, and so now there's fog again. Ah, so you get okay. like. You know, meadows that fill up with fog. The screenshot is really pretty. Like they really did a great job. I know it's with this game. Ridiculous. Like, it's so so nice. And I'm hoping my if Angel I... Belt mod just pushes that stuff that much further. Yeah. Cause yeah, that's something that's that's kind of missing. So many Minecraft players used to the Angel Ring. Yeah. I, it's one of those mods that, you know, as we were building this, I was like, I really want an Angel Ring. And I was like, I really <laughs> want an Angel Ring. And I was like, why don't I just make an Angel Ring? Like, it can't be that hard. Well, yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> in the end, it wasn't that hard. But learning how to do it, as we covered right. in the very beginning of this stream, learning how to do it was the process i mean that's 40 hours worth of work just to learn the objects and learn like the, the, all the different ways the game works and once once i knew that then then i knew how to solve the problem but that was something that really bothered me at, at work is when i'm you know doing a big problem and it ends up having an easy solution and it's like well yeah here you go all I had to do was just move this line, and it's all good. Yep. And, you know, you're just sitting there thinking, oh, God, they're looking at me like I'm a moron. Alrighty. I'm trapped. Nice. Unfortunately, I got to go work on food again. Oh no! Yep. I'm having abandonment issues. <laughs> Maybe Renegade should come help you. No, I'm okay. Or somebody accidentally, you know, like chases him in a bunch of acacia stairs. That would just be weird. Oh, it's right in between two two sets of blocks, so I can't. Okay, AFK.
So once you grab some granite, you probably brought a crap ton of them. Um, the granite rock, I have a I have a crate out by the build that you can put the granite rock blocks in. The or the basalt. Jesus. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, Stacks of stone. Um, let's see. Let me check how much of all the things that we have. Looks like we got a decent amount of quartz. Nice. Um, granite is also something we're a little low on. Say we have plenty of that. We have a decent amount of quartz. That's awesome. Yeah, acacia logs is what. Wow, we are so short on those. I don't even know where they are. Um, I mean they're down by or near where you were. Um. Salt. So yeah, if if you just keep going south, the further south you go, the more desert-like it gets, and pretty soon you run into sort of a subtropical and savanna-style biomes, and all along those is where you find acacia. Like there's a huge swath around um, where acacia's at. <clears throat>
lines settled in so people can come in and help build the roof. I'm back, but I'm going to be eating. Mm.
window over here. One, two, three, and then put that and that could be bookends to another. Yeah, it is pretty funny watching watching you do this and making, you know, what would have been days worth of progress already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is without flying this just in the last I don't know, hour or so, that would have been 30 40 hours of work. Yep. Yeah. Cuz imagine you know, like all the scaffolding you'd have to build up here, every level that you build up, like it's not to mention the how many times you would die from <laughs> accidentally falling or <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's a lot faster. Um, I think I have to start this one up further down. Let me do that. I'm going to do this one. This one had to be started one block further down. In order to line up, which is fine. should be milkable soon. the wrong damn it these are the wrong blocks a lot of these parsnips and carrots are getting cold damaged but they're not dying so looks like looks like these are something that we can plant and grow all winter just expect that uh, we would get less. Oh, wait. Oh, these are the... Oh. I thought I was working on this part of the roof, not this part of the roof. Roof confused it. <laughs>
I'll uh, continue to work on the roofs.
What's that? Did I cough on? <clears throat> Coughed on me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I got him confused. And I didn't hear the tone because I was coughing. Sorry, everyone. Um, should one of us go on an expedition for Acacia? Well, no, yeah, they're doing that. Yeah, uh, Renegade's already on it. He's on the case. Ah. Excellent. I hope you made an angel belt first. Nope. No, I still don't think he's made one. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep your eyes open for, for crops. Pineapples, especially. Yeah, we need pineapples. I found out that, you know, all this juice and stuff that I've been making, there's, there's a mixed juice but you have to have all six types Ooh. to be able to make it
Okay, milking the Generation 2 Ewes, I uh, I did have a couple of failures in there, so I'm, I'm still estimating that it's probably 75% or more chance of, of uh, success. That is more than acceptable. Awesome news. I, I ate the rest of the cottage cheese. We had a little bit that needed to be chewed up.
So far, so good. Yeah. No catastrophic design flaws? Nothing yet. Nice.
kids across the street are banging on something. Yeah? Well, God. it's not coming across on the on oh, the that's, Discord. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's, it is. Was it possible on the stream, though? Let me. It's really annoying. It must be like a fence post or something metal they're banging on every once in a while. Quite annoying. Oh, it is coming across on the stream. Yeah, Shoot. doesn't doesn't surprise me. It's one of the reasons I'm like anxious for winter. For some reason, it's November and it's still in like the 60s outside. Yeah. So once it actually gets cold, then then they won't go outside anymore, and I'll actually have a few months of peace and quiet. Part of the funny part is uh, p people from like California and such are watching, and it's like, oh my god, it gets to 60. <laughs> Yeah, it's for me. It's t-shirt weather outside. Exactly. It's when it gets to minus thirty that you really got to be concerned. Yeah. Come from a land where cars plug in, that are not electric. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's one of those things that has me worried. Is is uh, electric cars that. In, in our areas, they're not really going to be that feasible. They have warmers. Inside the battery pack, there are things that keep them warm. Okay. But how much power that draws, I don't know. Like, how much yeah. extra power that would draw. But, yeah, there are systems in there. And once the car is running and actively discharging, then they stay warm by themselves. But... Yeah. Um... And, but the other thing is, like, in, in this, in, in our areas for sure, like, one of the things about driving a, a gas car around in the winter is you turn the heat on and you're pulling heat from the engine, right? Yeah. Because the heat is just a byproduct of running a car. Where if you're in an electric car, the heat is actually generated by using even more power. You know, yep. it's like a toaster. It, you, it, so it's drawing even more power. So I'm not sure what um, what the consequence of that is and how much more power that you're going to need. Yeah. Even the air conditioner essentially uses the power of the engine to, to do that. But I suppose they could do that for electric engines too, theoretically. Yeah, but the air conditioner is essentially running a compressor. Yep. Um, whereas for a heater, you'd literally need to be running heating elements, which, I mean, that yeah. is a huge amount of power that you're going to be pulling. All right, so. Oh, no, I saw a block ball. Yep. And there's an os that chased it after it. Um. Uh, this side has some stairs on it. Should I still build, uh, build the roof? Or should I try to avoid the stairs area? Uh, the stairs. What do you mean the stairs? Uh, scaffolding stairs. Yeah, we're going to tear all the scaffolding out, so. Okay. We'll, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, over here. Man, even on the mini map, this looks awesome. I didn't even check the mini map in a while. Ooh, it's starting to come together. Yeah, that roof, roof line really makes a difference. Yeah, and uh, I like the color too. Yeah, I like that acacia dark red.
Just one, basically one block thick, like that, or do I want two blocks I thick? A, I have a food item for you. What's that? I have a food item for you. Oh. Just for you. For buggy? Yeah, you say you, what, is it me, or, or us? Either one, either one of you, really, so. What's that? <laughs> Termites. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm thinking... Huh. The Enjoy thin... us. <laughs> That's all right. I'm thinking the thinner version I like better. A little bit less intrusive. I wonder if there's a way to get them to propagate. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I like them a lot better. This one is just too thick. At least this game doesn't suffer from the plague that is mining super slow while you're flying like Minecraft does. Oh. Yeah. Mine just as fast while flying. Nice. Found them too. I don't know if you need them or not. Oh, sunflower seeds? Yeah, we got a bunch of those. But thank you. They are fantastic for feeding animals. Because you get so much out of them. The only problem is they take a little longer than many of the crops grow. So that's one one problem I still have to find a way to work around.
Some of this music is reminiscent of uh, Final Fantasy kind of style music. In the game? Yeah. Yeah, I have the music turned off, so. Oh, makes sense. I've gotten burned. Final Fantasy 7. Hmm? Final Fantasy 7. Uh, I was thinking the older ones. Seven would be pretty old, aren't they? At like fifty-six right now. Like, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think fifteen was the most recent one to come out, but uh, eleven and fourteen were online games. But yeah, you do have a little bit of both right there. I like how it's Final Fantasy, and yet there's fifteen versions of it. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> At what point is it actually going to be final? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's uh, uh, kind of like a translation thing. That or it's just one big inside joke, because as you said.
bunch of stuff. of stairs that I have in the chest in here. Oh, let's drop off the things. The thing. Hey, dude. Oh, don't be taking swings at me. Get out of here. Um, we have five eggs left. Uh, I could go probably another week without milk, so your EVT might be back by the time we need more. Ooh. You're not muted, by the way. Oh! Jeez, sorry guys. <laughs> That's weird. I wonder if I was muted before. I don't know. I've just been so confused recently. It's tough to keep track. There needs everything. to be like Thank an on-screen, like a little dot in the corner or something you can just glance at with your eyes that tells you whether or not you're you're muted. Why do you think I do push to talk? Yeah, I, I used to do push to talk on the streams. Uh, it was games like. Um, uh, Deep rock and things like that, where it's like, you know, I, I need to be active all the time. But yeah, maybe I'll have to switch back to that. 2400 granite. How much mortar do we have? Not very much. Alright. More mortar. Somebody restacked my quick one. Sandy sand. Did I knock that down? Do what? Oh, uh, I must have knocked the tool rack down. Oh no, you chiseled. Apparently, those don't link on chiseled stuff. I didn't chisel anything. Oh, didn't you? This one's chiseled and it's connected. Huh. Weird. Cause yeah, yeah, I can't place it down. It says, uh, cannot place this block here. It requires a solid side face. I put stairs right here accidentally. Yeah. And I... that probably did a block update. Yep. That's what did it. Shoot. Up there, okay. Um. Or do you want me to? Uh. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so let's go grab some granite. I need some more stairs. Shit. Do you imagine okay, trying to build this without my rock blocks mod? Where where the full full stone block is you have to specifically mine those by clearing all the sides out. Yeah, you know that, would be, that, that would, would be That would be tough. insane. Like that would be insane amount of work to quarry out that much stone. So yeah, that's why I made the rock blocks mod. <laughs> that would be insane. And we need 
Steel bits? Yeah, steel bits. Then the locks. 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 More locks. Then let's see. Yeah, mortar. Don't quite have it. Do I have any other? I do. Look at that. Alright, that should be plenty of stairs. And now what I want to make... More.
we go. Only one more corner one to do. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, gonna to go check if the ewes can be milked yet. Should be soon. I think it was about noon. Trying to get the pigs nice and fat so we can mm. get more more out of them. Because yeah, it's it's gonna be culling time pretty soon. Ooh. Pigopolis. Yep. Yeah. Because we totally need more more meat and fat and yes. bone and all that stuff. All right, we got some Gen, Gen 4 chicks in here, too. And yeah, right now, all of the pigs are Gen 4. Nice. Oh, I'm so close to having enough of that. Oh, I got, there's snow on my little model. <laughs> <laughs> little oh, itty bitty awesome. snow voxels, yeah. Oh, I gotta come see that. Yeah, on the roof there's snow. Yeah, you can't even... Like the roof, the wood texture on the roof is covered up with snow. And... <laughs> That's crazy. Just we all, what we always needed, more eggs. Somebody's melting up some iron. Oh, jeez. Every little pixel. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? I don't know how they did that. Yeah. Oh, this, this chunk over here doesn't have any on it. Weird. Yeah, it hasn't gotten an update or something yet. I don't know. I yeah. noticed that too. Like... You know, this is one of those games where they're spending a lot of time on things that you know aren't aren't super important for the game but for how well to put together everything else is i'm not gonna complain well yeah i think a lot of it is just having this an absolute strong foundation for mods right because right. you don't need to do everything a mod will come by and be like oh we're gonna add this and like the, I know, I know somebody's working on a mod that massively expands like the bees, like does stuff oh. with bees. So, you know, people will come by and be like, "Oh, I want this," or "Not, I don't want that." And just like me with the angel belt, like, yeah, they could have added some sort of feature in the game that did that. But let's have modders do that and spend the time, and and um, they don't need to worry about that. They just need to get the foundation as strong as they can and 
it sure is a strong foundation. Like they've done a phenom phenomenal job with all the features of the game. There we go. I removed more of the spam out there. I don't know if you can block that user or not. What the hell? Yeah. They must just have targeted you for some reason. Which is kind of silly. It would be more effective to go out and try to find somebody who's not blocking. I wonder if Google applied some kind of uh, change or something so it's now easier for them to get through or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not aware of any other changes. Yeah. I assume it would be unintentional, but, yeah. It's interesting because so many of the names are so, so similar, and I assume each of them is a separate user. Almost have to be. Either that or they're tr tricking it somehow, connecting to a different VPN. I don't know how though, because I've I've hidden the user from the channel, so you know it's yeah. it should be based on username, so it must be just you know bots just creating a bunch of accounts and yeah. Uh, I wish the world wasn't so broken like that, but you know it is what it is. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure you noticed, but I haven't been doing the chisel work on the uh, these corner roofs. I figured I'd let you handle that because you know exactly how to how to do so. Just something else on the to-do list. Alrighty. Oh. need to get all of the basalt pillars up to up to height yeah once, you, once you're done with the roof do we have enough uh, basalt yeah we should have several thousand in there so Excellent. Um, only add on to pillars that I have placed basalt on top of if a pillar is just brick on top 
leave that alone. Alright. Um, I'm going to check the ewes again here quick. And I'm going to check to see if the puppies need to go outside also. I was milking, milking one of the ewes and a ram got in my way. That's... He wanted his turn. Yelp. Hey, well, you're at it. <laughs> would you mind? It's like, yes, yes, I would mind. <laughs> huh. Shoot, I think he interrupted it so I didn't end up getting milk from that you. Milkus interruptus. Yep. That's okay, we had 20 extra milk, um, because they, there was two that were ready before the rest, so. Yeah, just imagine, this is the small version of my build. Like, this is tiny compared to what I usually build. Do I have that on this side? Yeah, I'm not going to be letting my puppies out pretty quick here. All right. Well, I'll stay out here in the cold. Freeze my little voxels off here. All right. I'll be right back, everybody.
now. I can look at flight controls, maybe. I need to do a little test. I'm back. He's back. Now, do we have any spare? We do. Yeah, yeah, I can do some tests. Okay. Um, is Renegade back? Renegade is not back. Nope, don't seem like it. I was gonna sleep, but. He's such a renegade. He's such a renegade. So, what would happen? I can do this upstairs. What does this look like? It's flat. Darn. Um, let's look. Trying to figure out what I can top the columns with. Or is it just going to have to be a massive amount of chiseling <laughs> for each <laughs> each topper? Oof. Yeah. <clears throat> As you remember, the in Minecraft, when you had cobblestone fence, and you there was a little bulge that came out of the fence on each intersection. And that's what I was looking for is a little a little bulge, but um, it doesn't seem oh. to happen with this fence. Oh, I think Renegade's back. Let's sleep Renegade. January. Nice. Minus 13, minus 14, 16, 17. Ooh, they're cold. Okay. <clears throat> um. Crops are growing really slowly, but they're still growing. Some of them are even 75% produce. Hoping to use something shiny like gold, but that would take an enormous amount of gold plates. And I want to <clears throat> probably mod gold blocks. Because um, gold blocks are in, but they take six plates per block. Oof. So that is 12 ingots per block, <clears throat> which is a lot. I don't know what the Minecraft conversion was, but I'm pretty sure it was like four ingots per block. 
Sounds right. Um, nine. Oh. Right, it was nine. Right, because it was a full. It was a full thing. So that's six. No, that's twelve ingots per block. So that's worse. <clears throat> um, so let me jot a note down here. Um, if I can find a writing utensil. So gold blocks, nine ingots, because <clears throat> I can, we can pour 40 ingots at a time. Actually, we can pour 80 ingots at a time with one full thing of gold. And we have quite a lot of gold, 36,000 nuggets. Um, <clears throat> so I'll make that part of my random changes mod. Is there a silver block? There is. Have you made a angel belt yet? You did! I can see it. There it is. And it updates. Awesome. God, I'm so glad that worked. You see the texture? Look at the texture of my belt. See how it changes subtly? Okay, yeah. Yeah. That was... That little investigation and getting that to work, that was about... 15 hours of trial and error. <clears throat> okay. Oh, he's making anvils. Yeah, the thing about health hammers, one of the reasons I didn't do health hammers is the anvil recovery mod you don't get any of the bits back so when you make like steel and you and you hammered the blister steel down to steel ingots you get a little bit of blister steel um, bits back <clears throat> and then you can resmelt those into new ingots so we've got 53 blister steel bits um, which is two ingots worth it's, it's 20 a piece so that's two more steel ingots that we could make just with the blister steel I've gotten back. Um, and then there's 48 blister steel in here that has to get converted. So there's we have a crap ton of uh, blister, uh, blister steel to convert. So the fence, I mean, I there's no metal fence, which is unfortunate. Because that would look kind of cool. You know, like the fence we have around the garden, having like a gold yep. version of that. Um, does this? Let's double check. Close this. There we go. Um, if I have a fence out here, so that doesn't bulge either. But that's still a nice texture. I wonder how hard it would be to get a gold fence structure. Because then we could go up like that, and then in like that. Something to break up the textures. Phone's ringing. I'm gonna go see if it's anybody. Uh, what other block types could I try? I mean, there's so many in here. Sh 
shoot only is copper. So that that would work, but those are a, those are a royal pain to place. Right. You can't rotate them after the fact. I think I think that's one thing they're gonna try to address. I hope anyway. No, whoever it was apparently didn't want to talk to me. <clears throat> oh. Sniffle. them in the build and the only way to get those is right now by traders and the one trader I have found in the entire world that actually has those doesn't have them every time he re restarts his or reorganizes or whatever you want to call it how far up should I bring these columns Said the one with granite don't bring or bricks don't bring them up any higher. But how about the ones? Bring them up to the level of the wall. You know, so this top of this window here. So I'm on 149. Up to here. Okay. Yep. So like these inner ones also. Yep. The inner ones right. go up. They all. And then I'm going to have to add some crafting recipes for the toppers of, the, of them all. Because they're all going to get the same top. It's just some of them are at different heights. More spam. What I'll uh, remove them if you want to ban the user. What the hell is up with that? Yeah. All right. Start getting rid of this scaffolding here.
cool thing is when you have these like red redwood slabs and stuff like this, you can actually convert these back into boards using the saw. So oh, nice. You can just convert them back into boards and put them in the, the board storage for redwood. Use them for other things. I think Minecraft, uh, I guess maybe it's not vanilla, but didn't Minecraft have something where you could put like two two slabs and make a, a plank out of them? Mm. I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. Still, I like the, the breaking them down into their base component more, but...
Yep, another round of snow encroachment just took us over. I placed one too many blocks here, but I figured we can just knock it out when the time comes. Uh, so these two columns up here, should they go to the top also? The front one? Or the ones in the back? Yep. Okay. They'll go up to the... This one, this specific one is... I've been prototyping this, so... One block below oh, okay. that square, so just keep it in line with the wall, and I'll figure out. Sure thing. <clears throat> Oh wow, that was my very last one. with some sort of pattern for these middle two blocks here. I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. But... There's going to be a lot of chiseling going around the whole building. A lot of chiseling.
it's already getting cheese rolling in. Cheese. I'm going to take a potty break.
that's one side. Is there any more menial work that can be done on the cathedral? Oh, there's, there's more pillars that have to go up. These ones on the All outside right. have to go up, too. The ones that have... Oh, the ones that have the base basalt? Yeah, the basalt on top. 
Okay. Those have to go up to the same level. I hope we have enough basalt. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a concern. I took about half of it. Should be some more rock inside, or the stones that you can convert to rock. Yeah. I think those are only good for another um, maybe 256 blocks, though, or rocks. Block rock, I guess it's the same thing, but not. No. Huh? Probably connection issue. Yeah, I got stopped. Shoot. Hopefully not from too high. That depends on uh, where I actually was <laughs> compared to where I thought I was. Fair enough. So if I was, I'm only about a block above the ground. Worst case, about 250. Oof. My next mod might be a magnet. Yeah, now that you know a little bit more about it. Yep. <clears throat> Challenge on that would be efficiently finding the stuff around the player at a certain radius. That would be, be tough to do that yeah. efficiently without bogging the system down. 
I'm a little surprised that there's not just a, a global variable that could be set for, you know, distance defined objects. Well, I can definitely look into that too, but. Uh... True. <clears throat> I suppose maybe it's just not named well enough to stand right out. Well, yeah, I haven't been, I didn't, I never was looking for it specifically, so. Uh, I was all about the. getting the angel belt working, so none of the <laughs> variables I was looking at were relevant. And a uh, area map generation glitch. Um, there's probably a few spots around, depending on where you are. There's a spot way down south where I was testing out the ore gen, so I was deleting all the rock in the uh, in the chunk. I found that area. Ah, oh, yeah. See, I was deleting the rock to test the origin to see how it was generating, and so yeah, there's there's areas where there's no <laughs> there's no rock. <clears throat> All right, so those are gonna have to wait for on the gold based blocks. Um, basalt, dry stone. A shame there's no like regular fence fence. Two more. <clears throat> it's looking good. Wow, we made <laughs> we've made more <laughs> progress in the last let's see four and a half five hours in the last like four hours than we did in like the week and a half before that we were building this yeah <laughs> okay so uh, let me grab some of the quartzy quartz and of course probably half the time is spent mining and the Flight mod probably won't help too much with that. I mean, finding new locations, sure, but. Possibly dying less. Being able to navigate caves would be a lot faster. True. You know, even some of the visual effects, like there, there was a weird tint to the screen where everything looked a little whiter and things like that. It's just very reminiscent of winter. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, look at that sun. I mean, look at the sky. It's really nice. I mean, Jesus. It's, it's shocking sometimes um, how nice this game is. I guess a big part of that, you know, they can they can af uh, afford the extra, you know, CPU cycles or whatever you want to say, um, 
for things like that because the game isn't as complex. I mean, I imagine a game like, you know, Satisfactory or something could look absolutely gorgeous, but nobody would be able to play it because they'd need a supercomputer. Don't get me wrong, Satisfactory looks pretty damn good the way it is. <clears throat> yeah, one thing about that game, though, is there is definitely a, a point when performance takes a hit. And yeah. It has nothing to do with the beauty of the environment. It all has to do with how complex and big your factory is. And for... You know, a factory yeah. game to suffer that much from a factory, um, you know, that's kind of an issue in my book. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't bode well. So I'm hoping, you know, eventually they do a round of, if, you know, um, optimization and make it super duper fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, we, we constantly, constantly compare Satisfactory to Factorio, but Factorio was in development for how long? Oh, yeah. Many, many years. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have our peak. It's going to fill that in. <laughs> this, <laughs> we're going to figure out some design. I might, I might look at my old video for the seven days design that we did and uh, try to convert that over. I'm not sure. Yeah. Seven days one did turn out very nice. But that one, it probably feels better because it was, you know, we had to worry about structural integrity. Yeah. So that was just part of the impressiveness of it. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, I kept mentioning that uh, I saw pufflets in the in the chi with the chickens. They must be underaged um, hens or something, because there's no pufflets anymore, and I haven't killed them. Pufflets? Did you Google it just to see if the Googles had anything about it? Uh, I did a search quick, and um, it came up with puffins. Hmm. So, Maybe and that was just a quick search. I found that, and I'm like, bleh. <clears throat> oh, yes, now that January has rolled around, we should start getting some, yep, there it is, maple syrup. Ooh, yeah. Or maple sap. Oh wow, is there is there three heights to the snow? I thought there was only two. And maybe I'm just forgetting how high the first first stage is. Salt. I see there's two pillars here that. Yeah, I was gonna go grab some more rocks and do that. Check to see if the ewes are 
ready yet. There's a wolf in there. Wolf. Yep. Missed and you hit one of the U's, but fortunately it was a Gen 1. You can spare one of those. Still feels bad, but... Apparently there's such a thing as a huge hide in the game. Um, it's in the files, but not in the game. Nothing, nothing drops it. Ah. So, I don't know if they have plans for like bigger creatures, but. All right. So two more. We've got a partial stack. So I think. I think the point that it's at right now, oddly enough, takes exactly one stack per Jigma thing. Hmm. Not a Jigma thing. Yep. All right. over two stacks so I should end up with some extra. Oh first I'm gonna check to see if the puppies need to come in.
Yeah, once we get the full roof on this thing, we'll be able to take all the snow out from underneath here. Yeah. Be able to uh, actually have some sanity left. Do you have a plan for uh, a plan for the the main floor of it yet? <sighs> or for the floor? Yeah, for the pattern or some sort of. I don't know, man. I, I'm not good. I would have to research or look up, like, floor patterns or something and, and figure out if there's a something we can do that, make, you know, that looks decent and isn't, isn't godly. And like, ugh, it's just, ugh. <laughs> I just don't want people to look at it and go, what is that? Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. All eight of the outside All columns right. are done. Excellent. And if I remember correctly now, you're going to have flying buttresses up to something, or no? No, the, the toppers on all these is going to be granite, just like the spot below it is going to be just... Okay. A Three by three of just like that. All right. Next thing I could uh, fill in more of the roof. Yeah, if you, if we, <laughs> yeah, if we have the, if we have the acacia. I'm not sure if we have enough. Yeah. Whoops. I don't know how many logs. Yeah, I don't know how many logs he brought back. So. I think he had like 700. No, I brought back close to 1300. Nice. Oh, that should be pretty darn good. Yeah. It's a big roof. I gotta figure out how we're gonna do this. I'd like that to be under. so much more granite. Yeah, and you could technically make these flying buttresses. You could uh, make a chiseled block with these two textures and then diagonally chisel all the way up. That would be an immense amount of chiseling for each one of these. <laughs> it's going to be a lot just going around the middle of the, like the middle band here, going all the way around with some design. Um, because each one of these, there's two blocks here. So if I show you here and here and then so those two block spaces right there, those are chiselable. And the ones above those are just quartz. But I gotta figure out some design. I'd like to take this. want it bordered at the very least with a thin layer of black. So I'll prototype this here.
We're about half done with winter and we've barely dented our food supply. I love it. Just like that. And then up here, same thing. And in here, I don't know. <laughs> it just <clears throat> like I need to look up like bathroom tile patterns or something. <laughs> just <clears throat> something simple that I can just repeat over and over again all the way around the building. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be so much jizzle. But once I get a pattern done, then you know I can, you know. Force Oz to help me. I mean, ask him to. Help me. <laughs> Fair. Is there anything special I need to worry about for the roof other than the uh, cobblestone or the the stairs? The columns? Um Yeah, just don't do anything around the pillars. Just do the the empty spaces above the Okay. Um above so the this one and the ones to the side? Yeah, these three on all the okay. pillars, because I'm not sure how that's going to get laid out yet. But the, yeah. the, the area above the windows is pretty standard, so that'll be... Sounds good. <clears throat> Two at a time, because that'll be a little easier. Got to get used to the pace of flying again. Should the roof go down a block too, above the windows? I don't think, yeah, you didn't do that for the previous floor. Um, I can see that going either way. Yeah, I, I always debate that. It never really looks right, having a, having a stair sticking out. Um, and we can, you know, test it on a facade and see if it's good or if it doesn't. Yeah. Well, I suppose I can go the whole way across on this side. I don't have to stop at just two sections. Yep. All the way. Uh, another thing you could do is rather than doing a full stairs, you could chisel a slab. So it's just one, you know, one quarter of a, a flank. Yeah, you could yeah, you could you could definitely drill it down so it's just a little nub sticking out. Yeah, you know, we can try that. I mean, 
I'm not sure if slabs are chiselable, but we can certainly try. True, true. Because I can chisel a stair, so it's just basically a stair that's chiseled down to a nub. Nub. Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, I am yeah, I suppose there might be texture concerns then, too. Plank versus stair. So each each set is is fifty two, or not set, but each line. So each layer would be then a hundred and four. Watching the what you're doing on the stream, nice. partial to the Greek key motif, but we could 
could go with, because this is the block space right here, right? Yeah, this is the block. So this. It's not quite to the edge of the, the block. So that right there is the edge. Still not the edge. Damn. Okay, go. Salt, 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 salt. I like how the sound you picked for the, the angel belt activation sounds like a, a serial, superhero doing one of those uh, takeoffs. You know, the almost sonic boom kind of mm. launches. Yeah, no. 
absolute waste of gold. I'm aware of that. Oof. 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 Alex, what do you think? That oh. this over here? Don't worry about me. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, the things aren't in the game yet that I want to use on those.
you wanted to um, start cooking a massive amount of gold ingots. What? Like, all five maxed out, all five fireplaces maxed out on gold and just keep pouring ingots into those molds and because when I finally get that recipe in, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of gold. The plate mold or the ingot mold? Ingot mold. It's a little decoration, but I didn't want it too busy, a little bit predictable. That should look pretty good. Anyway, I don't want to get too crazy doing it. Chiseling.
kind of sticks out a little bit. Not that you'd notice it coming up the stairs, but this whole thing here is also chisel roll. <clears throat> so we'll be able to do this. It's a big roof. Jump. Halfway there. memory serves, you can mirror my model. <clears throat> this will help decide. This will help decide like what pattern I use in here. So the texture on this needs to be chalk, basalt, wood, So I'm gonna have to wait until I can get more gold blocks. Which is gonna have to wait for me to update the mod. So let's see, the last part of the stream here will be me trying So, we're going to look at Lucky's Random Changes, Recipes, Grid, New Text, um, uh, Better. things 
games and stuff. Let's look at. Let's see. Users, buggy, update, roaming, vintage story, assets, survival, recipes, grid. Um. Metal block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this, paste it. So we're gonna look at items, resource, ingot. So this is ingot dash metal. So we can go here. And so ingot dot star name equals metal. Okay. So the star gets filled in for what metal you use. And the code comes out metal block dot metal. So ingot dash copper will get metal block dash copper. <clears throat> and Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Better metal blocks. Um, ingot. Metal block that metal. So that's all you need to do. Set it to three by three. And it's ingot, ingot, ingot. So it's a three, three by three of ingots. Nine ingots give you a metal block. So that takes care of that to-do list. Now, for the funsy part, let's see if I can get, if I know my stuff well enough, a block. Chandelier. Oh, there are eight of them. Textures. Okay. So, shapes, block. What was that? Block, metal, chandelier. I'm going to copy those. Shapes, block, metal, chandelier. And I'm going to try. So right now, uh, black bronze is the is the texture it's using see block metal chandelier black bronze so that must be a special uv map texture for the chandelier itself let's look to see if it's really that special that's the shape textures block metal chandelier no, it's just nothing special about it. It's 32 by 32. So you can see all the different ingots, right? So if we look at black bronze, this texture compared to this texture. A little bit of a difference which is weird because why is there a difference? The same material. So the one from the chandelier is a little darker um, for whatever reason. 
Um, so what we can do for hours okay so we're gonna we're gonna grab the blue nuts textures Don't care about those block types middle Chand chandelier there it is chandelier we're gonna paste block types new folder metal chandelier this is going to be my chandelier uh, let's just craft a little, little bit better code chandelier block chandelier this is going to be craftable chandelier Variant groups. These are all your different variants. Um, <clears throat> textures right here. So I want another set of variant groups for metal. Right? And then I want a bunch of metals. Variant groups. And the load from properties actually just brings in all the different metals, right? With the code of metal. <clears throat> now this could not work at all or what but um, I would like metal to appear above the candles because these star dot candle zero will still include the metal <clears throat> the shape um, I need to change For mine, shapes needs to be craftable chandelier. So this shape is going to be game craftable chandelier. And the type is fine, right? So it's just going to use the type. It's not going to use the code or the, the, the metal. It'll just use the type. Um, draw type, block material. The shape is fine. The textures now. So this is going to be um, game. Block metal chandelier. Instead of being block metal chandelier, black bronze, what we're going to do is we are going to set it and forget it. No. Um, block metal This is still super much darker. I don't know why. Um, instead of being that, I would like. Oh, there's an iron fence? What? Hmm. Iron fence top. Huh. I guess not. Um, iron is fine, ingot, plate, sheet. Huh. 
I think sheets sheets are different from plates and sheets are actually like you put those on a block like carpet I think that's the why is my computer like struggling here this is weird what is using RAM What is going on here? Task manager. Whoa, 31 gigs of RAM being used. Ouch. What by? By were fault. For some reason, Vintage Story is still going. Huh. That's that's using four gigs, but Windows Problem Reporting is using twenty six gigs of RAM. Damn! Wow! What in the world is causing that? Fault.exe. End it. End it. Now it's using 30 gigs of RAM. That was, uh, that was a first. Yeah, weird. Yeah, look at that. Look at that performance curve. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. That was me ending Vintage Story. Then it was climbing again. Tap, tap, tap. Boom, it drops when I ended that worf. <laughs> like, what was that about? That was crazy. I don't know what was going on with that. Perhaps Vintage Story... Uh being left open caused some kind of crash in the background and Windows tried to recover? Yeah, I'm going to look at my vintage story logs really quick. Client debug. All these JSON files that tries to load. I wish it would just not print all of these. All right, Angel Belt, there's that. Not seeing any. Yeah, this thing logs so much. Like the log file for that session I just did is almost 800K. Yeah, that's almost a megabyte worth of log files. Um, Material stone. Yeah, every time you, like, received inventory contents, like, every time you pick something up, it logs it. Like, it's a little much. All the things. It does make a little bit of sense for where they are in the game, but it would be nice to disable, or be able to disable. Yeah. Yeah, every time you shift-click inventory, like... Yeah, how many... This thing is almost 7,000 lines. That's a lot. Um, okay, so back to this. Let's just... God, that was so weird. I was trying to look at stuff and it was like... Suddenly the game was just not having it. Or my computer was not having it. Okay, textures... Block, metal, ingot. I think these textures are fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, we can ignore the textures, right? That, it already knows the look in textures. But block, metal, ingot, 
metal. Right? So ingot has all the metals in it already. These are all the metals. Because the ingot uses this too. This is the this is the textures that the ingot loads. Right? So shape is fine. They use type. This one will use the metal. And candle is the same block candle. That's fine. Drops. That's good. Now, the code that this is going to drop has to be craftable chandelier metal candle zero. I'm hoping this works. Um, whatever variant it is. Um, sounds, that's fine. Craftable chandelier. HVB types, okay. Um, craftable chandelier. Dash star. So there's all your, this is all of, this star means all the metal, because it goes by order. Code, metal, type. So code, metal, type. Fingers crossed, that's what actually happens. I've, I've had it before where something makes sense in my head, and, you know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Um, so this this just sets the number of candles that it drops compared to how many are in there, correct? Um, the block chandelier, that is the object. It should not have any problems. It should not have any problems. It's the same block, it's just I'm, I'm editing the texture with different metals. I want all the I want all the metals. So the big thing there assets game blocks metal chandelier. What? Assets why what? Oh, yeah. I, I renamed the folder, so it's it doesn't know where any of these are. But this should be fine. Um, should be good. Oink, 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 oink. All right, craftable chandelier. So that this may work. Now I need the recipe for it. So what should we? What should we do for the recipe? Um, hmm. I need to see. Uh, in good metal, there's your texture. Do I type? Exclude by type. Working temperature by type. So many, so many of the things. Um, so we're done with that. Metal block. That's the games one. Better metal blocks gives me ingot metal. Metal block of metal. Good, good, good. So now we are going to add recipes grid craftable. Chandelier. Dot shape. 
Jason. Don't tell me something is happening again. want to grab this pattern all right <clears throat> so what pattern do we want um, let's do blank 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 so one on the top three down the middle let's do actually should we add a plate into this, make it interesting? Uh, let's do I, IPI, I, I. This is I, ingot metal. Metal plate. Of metal. I think this is how you do it. Any recipes that you can know offhand? That use ingots and plates in their in their recipe. Hmm. Craftable. Dash metal. Dash candle zero. And this has got to be game. This is, has to be game. This is my titanium armor. Glorious. Okay, so game. Craftable chandelier, metal camel zero. I mean, this should be all I need. I'm not seeing any. Yeah, I didn't think there was, but... So, uh, just in case, metal plate down the middle. Two things with metal in it. Yeah, I don't know of anything that has plates and ingots. Um. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll I'll try this. Dot star name metal. Make sure both of those are the same, I think. I hope that's what works. So, and then it'll create a craftable chandelier of metal of candle zero, which is exactly what we want. So if we look back into block types, craftable chandelier, craftable chandelier, metal type. Then candle zero. And That's how that works. So 
sometimes you have to do this in mods you have to put the domain on there I haven't fully figured out when you do when you don't because all of this stuff is in the game domain if we look at like this assets game that's the domain that we're in it should work but sometimes you have to put game in there just to force its hand it doesn't hurt to put it in if it doesn't need it and it's in there it doesn't break it but if it needs it and it's not in there it definitely breaks it um, and I have run into it in, in one of my you know, in, in some of my work on the, <clears throat> the uh, like, Orza Plenty mod and some of my other chain, random changes, you know, I'll, I'll do all these files up and I'll load the game up, which takes, you know, two or three minutes. And then, you know, the item won't be in there. So I'll go back to the code and, and look at it all again and review every line of it and save it, load the game again. It's still not in there. And I'll, you know, I have spent hours trying to debug why something isn't working and all that was needed is this game colon <laughs> in in one place or another like yeah and so i've just gotten used to now every time i go through i just make sure this is good to go um, and the other thing i would like to know is how high we can get lighting like how high does lighting go because an eight candle craftable chandelier has a light level of 24. And I happen to know the sun has a light level of 22. So yeah, a fully maxed out chandelier is brighter than the sun. Now, let's see, let's go to, let's load up my trusty DN spy. Lights HSV. Light HSV. So let's see if we can find the lighting system. Search light HSV. Okay. Entity glowing agent. Is there a cap? Turn this to lighter. Let's look at um, not the API gain content. Lock chandelier. Last code part. Just all sorts of. I don't know what this code is all about, but. string hash what in the world why I guess candle zero like why don't they just do this with a case on the text this that's what in the world does this code do? It's looking at compute string hash. What a weird implementation of candle count. <laughs> that is a bizarre amount of code there. What in the world is that all supposed to do? That's weird. Anyway. 
so random. Like, that just seems like, man, that is so weird. Makes no sense. So, late HSV. For light emitting blocks. Yeah. It'd be interesting to add something like a gleam to the game. Um, it would be very, very easy <laughs> to add something like that to this game. Um, It's only three bytes. So hue, saturation, and brightness. So V is your brightness. Hue and saturation. Um, hue is nine, saturation is three. I don't know how that translates in the game, but whatever. So block. Clone, base block. Like, I'm not seeing any sanity checks of uh, clamping that down. Um, block to get my agency. Block you gave it. Turn. This is just getting the in light plus add string. Stack as it get lining. Okay, so this determines if it has lining and it adds two to the light. And then it creates the new byte array with the new value. Set light color. Get string. String color. Turn array. Block accessor. Okay. Nothing in there either about clamping. Uh, main place. Light edition is greater than five. Okay. Operation rejected. Server overload protection is on. Might kill the server to place that many light sources. Interesting. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so this is in world edit. This has nothing to do with survival mode. That's just at any at any operation it's saying okay well that is a high so you can't place over 8 million blocks in one shot. <laughs> That's a lot of blocks. <laughs> uh, nice. So yeah um, I, there's nothing stopping us from saying hey the craftable chandelier could have a higher light level. So let's just try this. I'm going to do 24 there. We're going to go 28 there. And just see what happens, I guess. Just see what happens. 
um, see if it bombs out on us or ang it's angry at us for any reason. Craftable chandelier, metal, candle zero, excellent, ingot and star. That should be good. Better metal blocks, ingot dash star, metal block dash metal, ingot. Okay, so those issues are done. Now, let's do a quick investigation with our angel belt itself. I'll increase the size of the font so it's a little easier to read. Uh, all right, so what I want to try to do is figure out where the flight controls are. So if we look at DN Spy. Right, and I'll, I'll increase the size. So, flight. Uh, hmm. Cycle fly modes, decrease speed, increase speed. Let's look at cycle fly. Nope. Wow, nothing. Okay. That's one of the things about the, the source that I found is there's some weird things that are missing from this code. Uh, like, I don't know. I haven't been able to find where it sets all the default um, key controls. Like, those are missing. I have no idea where those are. I've looked all over the place uh, for those. Entity control, maybe? Entity controls tries to move forward, backward, left, right. So what? Whether or not this entity is dirty. Ooh. So dirty. Oh, let's see. Move speed multiply. Ooh, there we go. Base move speed. Move speed multiplier. I bet you this. Signed by. Read by. A lot of stuff reading that. Blue speed multiplier. I'm back. Draw player. He's back. So this is the player physics. Controls. Controls the blue speed multiplier in the world data. Uh, 
So I could add, since I use R for um, flying enable, what I could do is add a Shift R, Control R, and an Alt R, right? Since I'm already using that, I can register variants of those three um, to like speed up, slow down, because there is a way to do it in the game. If you look under your controls, you can see the increment and, and, and decrease flight speed under creative controls. Now, where those are in the code, in the game, I have no idea. There is nothing in the source that I could find that um, actually handles user input. I have no idea where that is. So I don't I I have not seen the code that actually changes move speed multiplayer, but I'm guessing I'm guessing that's what it is. Is when you hit like I don't know what is it, F three or something like that, um you adjust this move speed multiplier. Uh so free move is flying. It was free move or So mainly, mainly, right, so is flying, no clip. Yeah, there is a no clip option too. I could, <coughs> could make a secret key code that causes you not to clip into the, you could just fly right through the mountains and stuff. Good for debugging, but not really for playing. Move speed multiplier equals player dot world data dot move speed multiplier. Now that would be a question: Is would I want to save that? Because if you let's say you're let's say you enable a belt, you're flying up and you decrease your move speed to do something, you'd run out of blocks. So you disable your belt, you go back down to the ground, you pick up some more blocks, you enable it, you fly back up. If I didn't save it, you'd have to then, again, reset your move speed in order to keep placing blocks. Now, if I save it and you re-enable it, then I can reapply the move speed, um, but then I would need a way to reset the move speed. Um, <laughs> and I think my titanium armor already does something similar to that. Let's go item types. Nope, that is random changes. No. Oh no, that's just, it was already in the game. Titanium was already in the game, but. Uh... Yeah, in order to actually make titanium, you have to have steel. I mean, it's titanium armor, it takes kind of end game it's supposed to be end game anyway patches there it is titanium armor this is what does it yeah there's a whole bunch of changes that I had to do to get titanium armor in the game 
Oh, that reminds me. I want to disable the walking around sound when you're wearing armor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I remembered that. <laughs> That's so annoying when you're walking around with that stuff. Um, let's go to item types. Wearable. Armor. Shape by type, textures by type. Foot, step, sound by type. Yeah, armor body chain star, wearable chain. So, like, is there, is there a sound that would be better or less annoying? Like the leather sound, maybe. Um, I haven't worn leather armor, so I don't know how it sounds like, but I imagine that would be a pretty good choice. Well, we can listen to it. Uh, let's see. Body, wearable, wearable leather. So if we go to sounds, sounds, wearable. There's three variants, looks like. Yeah, there's three variants. So weather one, weather two. I think I just want, I don't want a sound at all, just default, default walking around. Yeah, because I could just make it sound like lava. Oh, that would be, that would be annoying. Or sand, or snow. <laughs> Default is the least intrusive if you're running around with that. So, uh, this is going to be um, <clears throat> replace path. This is an attribute, so footsteps sound by type. And then <clears throat> armor body chain star. And that's it for the value or <clears throat> for the path. Armor body chain star. Value is not going to be wearable chain star. Oh, let's close that. Oh, why does alt tab never work for me? Um, value is going to be, instead of wearable chain star, let me pull this up here. Oh, no. I need to copy. So, right now, wearable, I need, instead of wearable chain star, I need walk default star. Right? Wearable slash chain star versus walk slash default star. So, you can see that. Instead of sounds, wearable, chain star, it's walk, default star. 
in that file is item types wearable armor. Oh, look at that. Item types wearable armor. It's already set. Armor body chain. Yeah, because the helmet and um, the feet or the legs don't actually do the sound. It's the it's the body that does that. So there's the chain. And that will be monumentally better. Because that's why I'm not wearing it either. Like, it was getting so annoying just hearing the little tinkle every time I was running around. All right, so that's two mods updated. Now, I want 1.4. that so shift R alt R so I think shift R what we'll do in code okay go back here um, we need a routine. Private pool on fly speed increase. And then private or on high speed reset. Right, so those. will be three different ones. Now, and this is these are all only on client side. That's all that matters. They're on client side. Um, I think, unless we really have to, oh, world data, yeah. we might have to set this up. Um, let's, let's do, Public string toggle. We could we could still use toggle. We could still use it for sure. Let's go to start client side and register fly keys. All right, so let's do this. Happy dot input dot register hotkey angel speed increase. Dot R hotkey type dot character control. 
controls. So this is increase. So this will be shift R. Right, so I want to do this again, and this will be DEC decrease, and that will be Alt R. So this will be true, false, false. And then one last one, angel speed reset, fly speed reset will be control R. Yep, so that's false, true, false. Now I need to register the handlers for these. Is that can be that input that set heart key handler on Y speed increased. How much should it increase and decrease it by? <laughs> That's the question. So I want to save. We need to look at what that value is. Um, that's all light HSV, right? Yeah. Movement speed multiplier is a float. So I want to do private float um, saved speed multiplier private float um, original speed multiplier. Okay, so. I'm going to set this to 0f, this will equal 1f, just to initialize those variables. I don't want to do anything to them and have them bark at me about something. Okay, now we want... to set these to do stuff and things. Now, does it matter? It, the server really does not care how fast you're moving. It really doesn't. Move speed multiplier. Like it just it just sets it and that's it. It just doesn't care. to be tick physics yeah there's actually code in here for mounts for like mounting on stuff wow not implemented yet or not fully functional yet but it's in there 
Um, wow, look at all of them. Okay. Actually, let's look at the handle sneaky. Signed by, read by. Yeah, it's all client-based stuff. I mean, the server, it, it, you, you tell the server where you are and how you're moving, but it doesn't simulate you moving around. Entity in air. Wow, they're back again. Look at that. Jeez. Report. So, um, original speed multiplier, because I think, I think the reason I looked at the armor there was a change walk speed yeah so if we do a search So stat modifier. So that is a different thing. Wearable, yeah, wearable stats. Um, item wearable. Doesn't look like that modifiers that walk speed. So the movement multiplier, that must be what I'm looking at. Starts off as one. And it's only assigned in the game tick. The move speed multiplier. So the original value is one. <clears throat> um, so.
So the original speed multiplier, I think, is 1 regardless. Um, and if I want to reset it, on client set, on client received, that's fine. So this is cappy.world.player.world.controls dot movement speed multiplier um, equals one. So that's just re that's just straight up resets it. This dot movement original speed multiplier saved speed multiplier equals zero F and this dot original Not sure how I'm going to use this one yet. Okay. So, on here, did I do a bool up here? No. So, resetting save speed equals zero, original speed equals one, and then set the move speed multiplier back to one. Return true. On speed increase, <clears throat> um, this dot saved or no, save. Uh, I'm trying to increase this so <clears throat> float current multiplier. So that grabs the current multiplier that I'm set at. Now I'm trying to increase it. Cur multiply times equals one point. How much should I increase it? 5%, 1%, The 10%? The flight speed? Yeah, the movement what? speed while you're flying. Uh, not sure. Mm. Right now it just says uh, walk speed 100%. Yeah. Do me a favor, check really quick. Um, fly in a straight line, put your armor on, and fly back the way you came, and see if you're flying with armor, if you're flying faster. Okay. Because that titanium armor should make you go faster. Sure thing. Let me get into. I'm a little ways away from the base. Let me get there first because it'll be easier to pick a destination. Five percent, maybe. So increasing speed <clears throat> adds. I mean, I could just plus equals point zero two five every time. Okay, and you wanted me to test this while flying. Yeah, fly. Fly one way, just get a, you don't have to like be accurate, but just yeah. overall, do you fly faster with the armor on?
doesn't appear so, but let me uh, duplicate the, the run I just did. If I, if I edit this value, I don't know if it's going to actually do a thing. <clears throat> Same thing is going to be done down here, except this is going to be minus equals. If there is a distance, it's or a, a difference, it's minimal. Okay. It definitely isn't the forty-five percent that. Uh, yeah, that should be pretty substantial. Um, yeah. So if I make it five percent increase and decrease. We'll see it. We'll see how that works. And then happy dot world world dot player dot world data dot entity equals dot movements we bump and equals. So this will just increase and decrease it by five percent. Set will set it back to back to one. Set. Okay, so that those all those do is set the fly speed plus or minus or reset. That's all that does. Um, now. When I want to toggle, so this is on the server. So in here, off and on, if it's on, what we want to do is restore. Oh, see, it's not, <clears throat> it's not going to set. So maybe when we receive I mean we definitely want to update <clears throat> our saved uh, this dot current. Saved speed multiplier equals current multiplier. Even when you subtract it, so that'll increment and decrement. Look at speed multiplier. 
and then save it out. So when we get that message back, <clears throat> belt response, toggle. client sends the message to the server, I think it will need to include this movement speed multiplier. I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to have to do. Start server size, start, where is that at? It's on the fly keys, I think. On fly key press, yeah, right in here. So belt toggle, we're gonna add public float um, saved speed. And then over here. Save speed equals this dot save speed. Like that. So that will send to the server our current saved speed. Because when we disable it, the speed will be reset. And then when we re-enable it, I need to restore the save speed. Resetting or setting it to, to back down is, is trivial. It's restoring that value that's, uh, that's tough. And then we send that packet. Now we have a new piece of data on the server. So in the, let's see, in the on client set this toggle I need to send belt well let's do yeah belt toggle BT actually it should, we just need to send BT we go to toggle here and we go belt toggle BT so now we have that value in here. So when it is, when we disable it, right, when we turn it off, this is where we need to say um, api.world.player. Actually, no, we already have the player. Player. Dot things and stuff. Uh, world data dot entity controls dot movement speed multiplier equals one f so when we turn it off this is what we do we change it to one um when we turn it back on We set it to the save speed. Now all we need to do is check if, because because we reset it here, um, when we increase it, it grabs the current one. So let's see. Let me run this through in my head. So we enable the belt. We increase it once. So now we're at. 1.05 1 movement speed multiplier. We turn it off. 
Okay, we turn it off, and every time we change it, we also save it. So with the save speed would be 1.05. We turn it off, which goes in here, sets it back to 1. Even though we say we 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 sent 1.05, it still sets it back to one. We get on and get some blocks. We haven't reset it at all. We re-enable it. Okay, we hit R again. Come in here. Um, and then. We send, when we send this, we send the save speed. And nothing has changed the save speed since then. Um, right? So when we send it again, uh, belt toggle, save speed. This should work. If there's errors in my logic, I would love to know because. Um, I would like to also determine whether or not the item is on at the moment we hit the key. We need to limit these controls to only when, um, So we need to figure out um, if the player has the belt. And the get variants only is working on the server side, not the client side. So what we can do, ooh, here we go. Um, this is gonna be a long, long thing here. Um, string. Let's just do, let's put, do a procedure that does this, because this is crazy. Um, private string, <clears throat> check client waste. This has to be bool. Return true. String. Uh, let's do first. Bool has belt equals player has belt. And also. That's just a sanity check, making sure the server isn't going to run this code because player has belt. Um, it needs, absolutely has to be on the client side. Okay, player has belt. If has belt, else. So if they have the belt, then string uh, last code part equals happy dot player nope, world dot player dot inventory dot get own 
own inventory of denum dress type dot waste. a long line of code right there so let's just review that so I want all I want is on or off that's all I want right so I mean I could just say just give me the code itself but I want that last code part um, so the client API dot world dot player that gives me the player that this is running on, gives me their inventory, um, and the inventory manager actually exposes all inventories the player is, has open at the time, which is one of the reasons you can have multiple inventories open at the time, at a time, because the inventory manager is actually managing how many inventories the player has access to. So I want to get own inventory. So all this does is return the player's inventory um, basically the class of character, because your, your character ID is appended onto that, so I just learned to do that. And it's an array, so I just do uh, an index into that array, into the waste slot, get the item stack, um, get the type of item, um, which is, you know, angel belt item, and then the last code part gives me the actual code that that is uh, that is and that's the on or off should be anyway good lord um, so uh, check client waste um, if last code part dot contains on Turn true. Else return false. And then I can just take this out. Like so. <clears throat> there we go. This will come in here and say, alright, I need I need to verify that the belt is on. Um, and so this will, uh, and I can just put a reference in here, uh, returns true if player has angel belt on, angel belt, and it is on, enabled, returns true false. True if belt is on and enabled. Or, or so I should say active. How about that? True if belt is on and active. <clears throat> um, client side only. Returns to if player has angel belt and it is on. is wearing an angel belt and it is okay and the reason I do it contains here instead of an equals because I don't know if it returns on or dash on not really sure. Okay, so why did I do all that? Um, I think. Can't even remember now. Uh, 
Oh yeah, in here. So. Belt successful. It had something to do with the response. Um. All data moves speed multiplier equal to bt dot save speed. Move speed multiplier equals one. Oh yeah, I think it was here. I needed to make sure if um call it check client waste. Basically that. I only want to do this if the belt is on and it's enact enabled. It's the only time I want to set this. Come on. So the belt has to be on and active for you to be able to change your speed. Now let's just verify that I don't have an error in my logic here. So when I'm increasing it, it's on and active. I grab the current move speed multiplier. I add 5%, 0.05 to it. Then I set to the new value. <clears throat> it would be equivalent of doing this whole line and then plus equals 0.05, but it is what it is. I'm sure the compiler probably optimizes it. And after I set it, I set the new value to the saved value. Same when I decrease it. And then when I reset it, I just set everything. Now, when we hit the key, to toggle this, I send in the saved. So what happens if we reset it? and then immediately enable it again, or uh, disable and re-enable it. Hmm. All data and all is moving through the multiplier. Reset, save speed multiplier. I think I want to set this to one. And I don't think I need the original at all. Yeah, I don't need original at all. And that'll, that'll help avoid too many bugs there. Because when you first do it, when you first enable and disable and then re-enable the belt, um, it's going to send that value whether you've adjusted it or not. So I want to make sure there's a value in there. If I set it at zero, that would be bad. You wouldn't be able to move. Because multiplying by zero, as you know, Um, 
So toggle from players and go response. So we go into toggle. This is server side. If we haven't ever changed it, it should be one. But if we have changed it, it'll be in here. Even, you know, it'll be higher than one or lower than one. Then if we disable it, we set the multiplier to one. There, there's something in the back of my head. There's a little neuron in the back of my head that's telling me that I have a major issue with this. Um, when we reset it, right? When we reset it, I want to make sure our save speed multiplier doesn't get overridden by, res by turning off the belt. If I turn off the belt, we lose that setting, the movement speed multiplier. We lose that setting. But I don't want to reset that setting. So when we re-enable the belt again, and these shouldn't change, right? These are the only things that change that save speed multiplier. And they're only called when it's enabled. So that should that should protect that should protect that um, that value because when we re-enable it again, we send the saved speed and we set the speed to that. Yeah. On key pressed is further down here. Yeah, save speed equals this save speed multiplier. Send back. So when you first time we enable it, it'll be one, which is what it is. If it's while it's on, we save, we change it, and then we disable it. Save speed should still be one point, you know, one zero. Okay. When we re-enable it, this should be 1.10. We send that in. It's enabled. It sets that value. And then we can adjust it again. Now, while it's on, we can reset it. And that just sets everything back to 1. Um, and Bob's your uncle. That should be fine. Uh, is there anything else I want to let's strip out some of this stuff that we don't need? Zero references, zero. Re I see all this stuff with zero references. Um, that means nothing uses that code. We don't need that code. On held interact start. We need that, even though there's zero references. That's a game. That's a that's a game event. We don't want to change that. Um, let's see. On before render, that's fine. Unloaded, that's fine. Even though these are not changed, these are not uh, used at all. On unloaded. So build, rebuild. Okay, so first of all, angel belt. We're going to set that to 1.1. One. F2, copy, send to compress, paste. Buggy's random changes, that should be 1.4. Copy. Send to compressed paste. Mods. There, buggy's random changes. 
is now before I upload data to the server, <coughs> obviously I should probably test them first. And I'm really curious, before I run the game again, I'm really curious to see what could have possibly happened um, with with this. Yeah, there's tons of errors in here from expanded foods. Not seeing anything here. Power recovery. Nope. No errors on this. Okay. There's an exception in here. Mechanics. B E behavior MP base. Try connect. Block entity behavior. Huh. Weird. Yeah, there's a there's an exception in here, but nothing to do with my mod. Hmm. Has to do with some some sort of mechanical block. Game content at mechanics, so pulverizer, quern, or health hammer. Got a exception in here for some reason. No reference. Objects no oh, weird. Yeah, there's memory leak. <clears throat> there's memory leak in the base game. Ah. Uh, that's understandable. Pre early access, even. <laughs> Mesh ref with VAO ID. And this, that ID keeps changing, so I don't know what, what it could be. Okay, so let's test the new mod, and I'll set it to windowed so y'all can see it. Alrighty. So the main thing is... Um, chandeliers should have some of those craftable now in all of the different metal kinds. So we can make gold ones if we want. Um, we're going to have a noise-free titanium armor set. Um, and hopefully some, some hotkeys to speed up and slow down uh, while we're flying around. So I can see flying freeze a bird in there. That is telling me that loaded. It's a good sign. And come on now, you can do it. What? What? Okay. 
here. They're not in here. What? Where the hell are they? Okay, so shift R. Not seeing any difference here. Hmm. Control R. seeing any difference at all. Strange. <clears throat> okay. Well, obviously there's a huge error when it comes to the chandeliers. Something was grossly bad about that. Okay, so let's save and leave. I can't believe it's still raining in that world. Jesus, that's annoying. Okay. okay. So what we do is we try to find... Go to the logs. Client debug, client main, server debug, server main. Um, first thing is let's do a search for angel belt. Okay, that's the only instances there. the only instances there. Flight key handler for R. So I know it got into that and I don't see any any errors. Client debug is fine. Server main. Jesus. Never seen a game that has such huge amounts of log files. Well, actually, no. Fortress Craft had obscenely large log files. All uh, right. So, no major thing there. Um, how about chandelier? <clears throat> there it is. Syntax error in JSON file. Blind eye chandelier. Failed deserializing. Control chandelier after parsing a value on a path bearing groups. Zero. Oh, just something simple right. like a missing character. Is that all that was? Um. Failed to use your actual chandelier. Um, game item, block types, metal, craftable chandelier. 
clear. Quiet. Oh, I debug. Okay, this is the only place this is appearing. Failed in error parsing a value on this right here. Position two. Aha! Point. <laughs> A single comma. <laughs> uh, well, at least it wasn't a semicolon. Oh man! Oh, just the. And what what format? Um, the worst file format that I have ever had to use for a game was the one used by Imperion. That yeah. the file format they used for that game is so sensitive that that would break the file. Just a tab in the wrong spot. That's all it took to break the file. Like, it was such a rigid format. Um, a space, a tab in the wrong spot completely borked the whole thing. So, yeah, it was crazy. Um, it was just awful. <laughs> YAML, I think? Yeah, yeah, it might be it, yeah. Yet another markup language, yeah. Yeah. Behaviors, attachable faces, up, down, decorative. So I need to, I, one of the things I also forgot is there needs to be a uh, block dash craftable chandelier dash uh, How do I limit There's no attributes. So how does it limit? There it is. Creative inventory. Handle zero. Handle eight. But that's creative inventory. How does it? How does it limit? Hmm. Um, craftable chandelier star. Can you use um, we have to go to game lang English Yeah, block chandelier dash star. Chandelier. Uh, block craftable chandelier star. Chandelier. 
chandelier. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to care about the metal that it is. Like if we look up ingot here. Yeah, there's one for every single type. It's one of the few areas that can't generate things. It's unfortunate. So, block craft will chandelier. Star is just a chandelier. So I'll work on I'll work on the angel mod after you know see if I can't get that to work. But um, or just not worry about it because holding shift you actually start dropping. Um, So, just double check everything here. Craftable chandelier. Textures are already done. Game block in the middle. I'm hoping attachable faces. That up and down is not, but this, I mean, this tells me everything, um, craftable chandelier, that's, that tells me what I need to know. Okay. Oh yeah, also I need to make sure that I can make, we can make blocks. Oh yeah, and I was going to look at seeing if we can make fences out of metal. Let's just double check this first before I get too crazy. You can do it. You can do it, game. There they are. Yay. Chandeliers. Beautiful. Let's go. Gold. No, that's bronze. Tin bronze chandelier. Okay. Uh. Chandelier. Where where is the there it is. That's brass.
So if we look at gold. Oop, let's check the gold lock. There we go. All the ingots. Yay. Gold ingots. Excellent. So let's look at a gold ingot. Ingot, gold chandelier, glorious. I do love when stuff works, so I should be able to give block craftable chandelier dash gold dash candle zero. Okay. And then give item candle <sighs> ten. Chandelier. Yay. See if I can get a fence the same way. Oh, yeah, probably. I guess I haven't been keeping track of how long much time has passed, but probably. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. Uh, okay, so that works. Chandeliers work. Let's uh, get out of here. Quit. Yes. So the error is gone. Yes. There, yes, no errors in here. Yes, I don't see any errors in there. Okay, <clears throat> so the random, random stuff mod is working. But if we wanted to, do I want to? Do I want? I kind of do. Metal. New text. Metal. Fence. If I could type it right. Is it? Yeah, it's fence with a C. Quickly go over to assets, survival, blocks, wood, wood typed, fence, close, copy. Paste. Metal fence can attach up down type of wall. Is fence true? Handbook group by metal fence code metal states age load from properties blocks metal type is fine. States is fine. Creative inventory is fine. Shape is fine. JSON, JSON, slow layer. Block material, metal, textures. 
Yeah, I'm going to take away this aged. Um, I'm going to close these all here and open our optical chandelier. Open problems with block metal. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was right. Okay. Block wood fence. No, this is the shape. These are shapes. I, I don't want to change. I don't need to change the shapes. I would like to change the textures. So this is superfluous. Wood fence aged. We don't need that. Block metal. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Survival. Textures. Block. Metal. Um, I mean, what's the difference between a plate and a gold plate? Definitely think the ingot is a little brighter and a little poppier. So again, block metal ingot. Blocks like, ooh, there's an overlay? What? Slightly darker. Oh, yeah, there it is. How about that? Like, interesting. I mean, should we keep it on there? I don't know. I don't know if we should, but whatever. Okay, let's take this. Well, you can have horizontal fences. That's kind of cool. Rotation 90. Overlays. Hmm. No overlay on the vertical. Weird. Block selection is fine. Place, hit, break, walk. Um, we definitely want to do the block. Hmm. Man, come on. Why, why do you need to be that big, Mr. VLC? Um, Block planks. Is there a block metal? No. So what sound is made when you place that metal block? I suppose I can just do... Um, Metal block. That's weird. Block types. Full metal, okay, full metal block. That's why I couldn't see it. <coughs> Sounds. Shoot. Okay, block shoot. Uh, that's as good as we're going to get, I think. 
Metal fence. Place. Block shoot. Block shoot. Block shoot. Bang. Block game walk stone. I need to put game on all these. I was really hoping not to, but let's just double check. Make sure we don't. Textures. I definitely want game here. Game here. I'm hoping all of these are fine. Creative inventory, wooden fence, you know, for, I don't need this. Um, let's do metal fence. <sighs> Handbook, group by. How do I exclude? The handbook is one of those areas that I'm still really fuzzy on how it works. Like, how do I avoid craziness? Because this is going to add <laughs> fence for every single type of metal. Um, now, now we need the recipes to make it. I'm not gonna do a gate metal fences only don't need gates uh, recipes grid text document um, metal fence JSON. oh my god yes change it Craftable chandelier. I'm just going to copy you, paste you here. <clears throat> now, what do we want? We want something really simple because I do not think we need craziness. <clears throat> Is there a recipe? Whoever's in the game of. <laughs> Is there a recipe of just. If you take like three ingots of, of copper or something and you place three ingots of copper across the crafting grid just one two three right next to one another is that anything i don't believe so because most most ingots are used in smithing rather than crafting right i i i game metal ingot don't need this ingredients. So it's just ingot, ingot, ingot. Output type block code. Metal fence. What the recipe? Recipes grid.
Maybe they don't have a fence. Dot JSON. fence yeah it's to to make the fences it's fence.json the crafting is wooden fence.json it's like they knew somebody's going to add metal fences okay so wooden fence dash wood dash east west dash free so that's what i need um down here is dash east west dot free so dash east west dot free quantity yeah we're gonna make eight at a time <clears throat> for reasons so metal fence dash metal dash east west dash free free is no snow east west is obviously the direction that they're facing but it has to pick one, and there's there's a ton of them, right? Um, you know what I could do? Um, name wood fence. Name metal allowed variance. So if I do allowed variance. I limit the variance that I have, it'll limit the insanity that is. <clears throat> so I'm gonna allow iron, gold, bismuth, um, copper, uh, <clears throat> let's look at the textures and see. This smooth has a really cool texture. Look at that texture. It's just awesome. It's just so shiny. This smooth bronze looks like throw up. Let's leave him like that. How about brass? Um, tin bronze. Zinc, it's just anything that's like brown or whatever, it's just like meh. Lead would be a good one. You can add lead. A lot of them, I mean, here's here's all the textures I'm looking at, right? So a lot of them are the same, like brownish, nasty, um, like black, black bronze. It's just ugh, compared to lead, which is a little bit pure of a black. Um, tin bronze, silver, if we wanted a brighter one, silver solder would be even better. Um, <clears throat> uh, is there a wood debarked here? This is the, these are the textures that it uses for the fences. It's just this generic... Uh, oh, I love when I do that. Um, purple heart. Oh, yeah, I'm not too picky about it. Um, good. So, obviously, bismuth. We have iron right here, a dark gray, iron, gold, bismuth, 
copper, brass, tin bronze, and lead. I'd add uranium, but uranium is not used. It's not, it doesn't even generate in the map. Um, steel is not the be-all, end-all. I really think steel needs a really nice texture. Blister steel is just chaotic. Uh, meteor iron might be kind of fun. I mean, it looks like... What is it? Sort of, it looks kind of like silver with acne, with like yellow acne. <laughs> That's what meteor iron looks like. <clears throat> uh, rhodium, that's a nice pure, but I don't really think that generates in the map right now. I think it generates, but it's very, very tiny amounts. I think I found a little bit of it. Um, so I think that's good. It's good for the variants that we we can. And then that will set up the um, metal fence, metal fence. So textures, block of metal, variant groups. Well, let's go here and go loud variants and limit. Limit even the creation of them. <clears throat> States. I can go this one fast, probably. <clears throat> that should be good. So that'll just that'll limit. It, it's not going to populate fences that we can't craft. <clears throat> this will already be a lot of fences, but uh, um, I really don't in ground group by metal fence death star. I don't know. You know, I can get metal. Okay, that's good. That's all good. Now the language is there. A a trick to um, oh, there is an iron. It's Block iron fence. Huh. I never... Is there an iron fence even in the... I didn't see an iron fence in there. Let me see. Okay, so block... No. No, there's just wooden stone variants. Metal fence dash iron dash iron fence. Oh, that needs some quotes. Okay, did I get that? Block metal fence. Dash iron dash east west dash star. Yes. Okay, let's close you out. Metal fence. So next one is gold. Next one is bismuth. Lead. 
Okay. Um, craftable chandelier. I want to change. This has to be setting the handbook. I don't see anything else in here limiting the handbook. Which is weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Okay. Middle EW free, excellent, and the last, the last little on stream check here. Send to compress, change, cut, mods. Place, got these random changes. Make sure that's good. Yeah, it's funny this sh this Windows background that I have. Yeah. The ship that's back there. That's obviously from Space Engineers. That's something I built and took a screenshot of. I would say near eight years ago. <laughs> that has been my Windows background for so long. Like, if it were changed, I would think something was wrong. I am so used to seeing that as my background image, it's a little frightening. Yeah. But I'm I'm thinking like if I can get if I can get this cathedral and the model made in the invented story and get a really good screenshot um i'll change it i'll change it to that because I'm, I'm i'll be really proud of that especially that model <laughs> that model is yeah model's a little bit tough okay so and the leer is still in here good, good. View and fence. Yeah, hey, hey, copper fence, baby. Nice. Copper fence, gold fence. I like those burn duration and stuff on here. Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe I should add a set of recipes that turn these back into ingots. Um, yeah. What else did I do? Like. Like, this random changes mod is so... I've done so much to it. When I finally get around to uploading it, it's... it's I'm going to have to go through it file by file just to, like, figure out what I actually did with, the, with, with it. Um, so, I think that's basically what... Better metal blocks, I know that works. Patches, or titanium outer, I'll, I'll check later. Diamond pick, metal fence. So if I just slash give item ink, it's gold 12. And I say, hey, how about you? Bingo. 
Tres. I love when a game... I love when stuff just works. You know, I just... <laughs> I'm very appreciative of when stuff just works. Love it. Yeah. Alright, so if we look at chandelier. Yeah. It seems like my mini map is zoomed in. Is there a way to zoom that out? Yeah, put your mouse cursor over it and use your mouse wheel. Oh, okay. That's how I did it. Nice. Thanks. Romeo. All right. So, my random things... Because I set the material to metal, um, you want to use a pickaxe, not a not a regular axe. So that's good. Glad I remember to set that. All right. Um, save and leave world. Want us to hop off the server? Oh, in a bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream here, and I'm gonna want to upload my random changes mod and the angel belt. Oh, man, I'm I'm on the fence whether I want to change that or leave it the same. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a little bit before I'm ready to uh, update the server. So. All right. So yeah, I hope everybody um, who does come by learns a thing or two. And if you uh, have any questions, don't forget don't you know don't hesitate to ask me either in the comments or on my Discord server, which is linked in the about page on my channel. And yeah, I thank everybody for coming by. And please hit that like button if you enjoyed the stream. You know, comment if you got something to say. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel.